So, Wood, uh, you are a bit of a Nintendo Switch enthusiast aficionado, as in you've been there since the very beginning. I know you've, you've done uh, videos about retro games prior and whatnot, and you still do every now and then, and like other things in general, but the Switch is, is your bread and butter. Yeah. I like to think so. Yeah. It's been a long five, six years. I think you are easily the, the best candidate to do this with. I have all of Nintendo's published Switch games laid out in front of us here. I, d I did make some tweaks here. Nintendo Labo is just one thing. Not all four, I'm sorry. There's also some things that were like co-published by Nintendo or published by Nintendo in other countries. I'm only doing like North America, uh, Nintendo published games. Uh, there, there was some stuff like apparently they co-published like Doom and Skyrim and whatnot with Bethesda. Nah, I'm just doing just raw, <laughs> raw Nintendo. Okay, good. Uh, I like that. I, maybe some exceptions here. I did this very quickly, so it's not going to be like, there might be some, there might be a couple missing, but I don't think there are. It sounds good. I think people would be very confused if we had Skyrim on the list. So I think you did a good job. Well, it's co-published. It's not fully published. So I don't really think it matters. Either way, I want to rank these all in a list, not even like those trendy ass tier lists. I just want to do like a full blown rank. Like the first one up is Fire Emblem Three Houses. Next one is Pokemon Tournament DX. Which one is better? I don't know. I, We're going to figure it out. I can give all right, you an answer so. on that. Fire Emblem Three Houses is clearly superior here. It's such a full blooded game. So much content. It's Fire Emblem meets Persona. I love that game to death. If we were doing a classic tier list, it would still be S. So S. And then Pokemon Tournament, it's fine, but it's not. If the, if the answer is which one's better, it's fine. It's like a B. It's fine. Things get a little trickier when we bring Splatoon 2 into the equation. Where does that lie? in the mix see i think okay so i don't have like a a very big opinion on pokemon tournament dx i don't really think a lot of people do i don't yeah. think anybody's like damn this is the, one of the greatest games no, of there, all time there are, or there's a few believe me there's a few i've been down that road but it's not you you are right in the grand scheme yeah well that isn't you know like i need i need to be more open-minded I, I just assume the world revolves around me and that there's nobody <laughs> that considers Pokemon tournament to be the greatest game of all time but i have not met these people yet but i don't see anybody that says it's the worst game of all time mm -hmm. i'm not saying like it's mediocre or anything it's just kind of like it's just, it does its own thing. It's good for that. Um, but, you know, compared to Fire Emblem, uh, I, you know, I haven't really had a chance to get fully into Fire Emblem. I like to make fun of it sometimes just because, like, it is the easy punching bag of the Nintendo franchise. Wait, that doesn't mean I don't like it. It's more so. Okay, all right. Well, we haven't gotten to Xenoblade yet. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, that's the easy punching bag. That'll be fun. It's Xenoblade and Fire Emblem. That's that. Those are the ones that just keep on getting, <laughs> they keep on getting games and people are like, Ooh. but Fire Emblem, uh, it's not that I don't like it. It's more so I just haven't really had a chance to, you know, fully embrace it, get sink my teeth into it. Mm -hmm. But I would agree with you that out of Pokemon Tournament, <laughs> it's probably better. <laughs> yeah. um, but Splatoon 2... Splatoon 2. So, this is everything up until Splatoon 3. I didn't include Splatoon 3. I didn't really give Splatoon 2 much of a chance when it launched. I, it was something where I wasn't really like... Splatoon 2 launched two years prior, and I got a lot out of that game. You know, played it for like 10, 20 hours or so. It was a great experience. By the time Splatoon 2 came out, I don't really think I was really like in the mood for a new Splatoon. I wasn't like, oh man, like this is this is just what I needed right now. But uh, I went back to it recently and it is much better and more different than I ever gave it credit for yeah. um, originally. Yeah. It's a great game. I really love Splatoon 2. It had a much greater graphical leap than it really seemed at the time. Uh, just playing like Splatoon 1 and then Splatoon 2. It has a lot more going for it than I think I initially gave it credit for. I, mm -hmm. Just at the time of its release, it was just kind of harder to see that. But where does it lie? <laughs> yeah, that's just a long way around to saying uh, definitely better than Pokken. I mean, I, I, I think that's not even arguable. Uh, now, th this is where it's tough because you have like a Splatfest FPS style shooter and then you've got a full 100 hour RPG, JRPG. I mean, how do you quantify which is better in their own perspective categories. I think they're both equally awesome. 
but which one would you rather like bring into the bunker like where the like the world is ending you need one switch game well if i want to put in that scenario assuming the internet is down splatoon 2 is kind of useless so i'm gonna have to go with fire emblem on that one internet internet is available internet's oh, available okay this you know, is like, a fun this apocalypse is, this is a situation i, I want to give i'm going to give you all the uh possibilities like everything these games have to offer look i i still gotta go fire emblem you can play it through three different times at the three different houses three different stories it's so much content personally for me i think that game's a banger um but i think they're very equal that's just my personal preference i i, I think and, and this is somebody who would probably you know if you gave me the option to play fire emblem three houses right now in splatoon 2 i'd probably click splatoon 2 that's why i feel like fire emblem three houses did a bit more maybe than splatoon 2 in terms of like just bringing new things maybe i don't know maybe what do you, what do you think I think, I think what we're balancing here are the masses at large would probably put Splatoon 2 first. It's the more popular game. Uh, it's popular right now specifically. I'm just, my personal bias puts Fire Emblem. I just love that game. I think it's great. Hmm. We'll put it, we'll put it below Fire Emblem for now. Okay. I'll give you that. But <laughs> okay. next up, this is Fire Emblem Central here. We got Fire Emblem Warriors, the original mm. from 2017, mm. the new 3DS game that came to Switch. Man. Uh, this game was never really the most popular. It wasn't the most popular with Fire Emblem fans as it, it kind of it didn't really do enough like fan servicey wise. It just kind of focused on the most recent titles like Awakening, Fates, all of that, nothing crazy. This was before the Fire Emblem War, the Warriors games in general became more ingrained in the franchises they were making games for now the warriors games are fully storied they're canon uh they do a really good job of making it feel like an extension of the universe this is back when they were literally just taking characters and throwing them in a big hack and slash style game and i think this game was pretty weak personally there's some fun to be had but it's definitely under splatoon i would say over Pokken, but only because i didn't really like Pokken but I I would fall back on you for that. I think you can have fun. I think you can have a similar amount of fun with pretty much any Warriors game, um, at least in the crossover sub-series of Warriors games where it's like Fire Emblem Warriors, Dragon Quest uh, Heroes, uh, and Hyrule Warriors, Persona 5 Strikers, all of that. You can kind of have the mindless, dumb fun with them in terms of a button masher. Yeah. So the gameplay doesn't really... And even though the gameplay is a bit different in this one just because i believe it uses like the weapons triangle from fire emblem mm -hmm. even though it's just like at the end of the day most warriors games even if you tweak the gameplay a little bit it's something where i look at hyrule warriors age of calamity i, I really enjoyed that game especially when it used more breath of the wild you know elements um like the runes and and uh, your uh, sheikah slate but at the end of the day, I look at that game and I'm just kind of like, that's it's still a Warriors game at the end of the day. So there, there's not much, it, you know, like the gameplay element can really do. Um, I'm kind of torn between putting it above or below Pokémon Tournament. Yeah. Because Pokémon Tournament's, you know, like... It's a solid game. It, it's good for what it is, mm -hmm. but also maybe consider the fact it is a port from the Wii U. It isn't like a Switch must-have. Uh, but this is a port from the 3DS, so I... No, no, I was <laughs> I was being cheeky there. It came out to the 3DS alongside it, but it was probably it was probably downgraded to the new 3DS. I, I don't know. I... You know what? Because you say you threw it to me, I think Pokémon Tournament kind of has more of a lasting appeal than... Ah, uh, damn. Pokémon Tournament's more unique. I think Pokémon tournaments are more unique. Do you feel the fans getting upset? Like they've paid to be here in a way, and they're just getting their favorite franchises trashed on. I don't really know. I don't really know <laughs> if it's a. Uh, I don't really know if there's a ton of Fire Emblem Warriors defenders no, out there. I think there are people that tolerate it. People get really vocal about their thing, but you're right. It's not that big a deal. I would say. I would say. Fire Emblem Warriors is still a Warriors game at the end of the day. Pokémon Tournament, while it you know is you know similar to Tekken, it's made by the Tekken people. Um, I think it's more unique. I think it has more of a unique thing on Switch, especially considering there is another Fire Emblem Warriors game on Switch that I would say is better. Yeah, much better. Um, I think Fire Emblem Warriors had such a limited just like it did it didn't really do much for being such a new game like it was a brand new game released during the switch's launch year and i think it's the one that most people kind of forget even though i think pokemon tournament's also one people forget so it's just i don't know i'll, I'll put it below pokemon tournament next up is link's awakening okay now 
you're talking to me. So <laughs> this is going to be tough to not be biased. I love I love Link's Awakening. Oh, really? I now? Think, I think it was one of my favorite. It is one of my one of my favorite games of all time, okay. especially the remake. I want to hear where you're putting it then. Uh, you go, you go. I would put it Mm, well, I mean, like, if we want to be unbiased, but who cares? <laughs> we don't, like, it's going to be biased regardless. Yeah. I, mm, well, I mean, like, here's the thing. Like, I never really have to replay this game. Played it, and I loved it to bits, mm. but I don't really have much of a desire to replay, at least yeah. in the next couple of years. Yeah. Um, I think Fire Emblem is probably the better buy for In most infinitely people. replayable like, yeah but overall like an experience that really like sat sat well with me and, a, and an experience that genuinely improved upon like a game that really needed that extra just like hey we need to bring this into the modern day but keep what makes it it mm -hmm. and i think it did an outstanding job because playing Link's awakening on the original game boy and game boy color like it, it was so tedious to go through that menu every single time you wanted to swap weapons um, or items. And I think the remake improved upon it significantly. It could have improved upon it even more. Uh, there were some things where I'm like, why why did you retain that? You know, you could have gone even further. I think overall, I would put Link's Awakening above Splatoon 2, maybe Ooh. Fire Emblem. I want to hear your thoughts. Uh... This this could just be biases coming in because Splatoon 2 is a great game, but I would agree. I loved Link's Awakening and I did really love this remake a lot. It's gorgeous. It was so much fun. It's a nice challenging Zelda game. Uh, this just the, the, the thing that crushes it is there is really no replayability. Unlike a lot of Zelda titles, I feel like, they, you know, even Breath of the Wild, obviously, but even games like Ocarina and Majora's, I find so much replayability in those that this Zelda game just doesn't really have. I think Splatoon 2 has a lot of replayability if we're going down that avenue, but it's Zelda and I just, I don't know, man. It's just my weak spot. I'd have to. I mean, the fact that I'm putting it under Fire Emblem should speak volumes that I am trying to be unbiased about stuff, but yeah, that's where I would put it. Yeah, I mean, Splatoon 2 has like, if you want to count DLC, it has two single player campaigns. It has, you know, all these multiplayer maps. I mean, like, yeah, instantly, like in terms of my favorite Switch games, this goes above everything we've listed so far. But in terms of like just ranking these more in like kind of like a critical way, I would say probably either between Splatoon 2 and Fire Emblem or be right below Splatoon 2. Which I mean, like right now, if we're if we're just looking at the six games we have, that th this looks bad. <laughs> this looks really bad. It's just like, yeah, Link's Awakening goes in the middle <laughs> and whatnot. But when we start to add stuff, it'll 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 flesh out mm -hmm. a little bit more, um, and it'll look a little better. Of like, all right, yeah, Link's Awakening is still high up there. I think it makes sense between Splatoon 2 and Fire Emblem, but below. Um, or below Splatoon 2. What, what do you think on this? I'll, I'll leave this one No, to I definitely agree. And I want to say as well, I actually had more fun playing Fire Emblem than I did Link's Awakening because I just really love that game. Um, so yeah, I'm happy with there or below there. Um, really, it's it's up to you. It's your video, your list. I think, I think it probably makes sense to put it below Splatoon 2 just in terms of Splatoon 2's impact on Switch, just how successful okay. it was. Okay. Um, being an overall more fleshed out game because I think... Um, even though at launch there was, you know, there wasn't as much in Splatoon 2. Now Splatoon 2 is this huge experience. Yeah. Um, so we're looking at it kind of now. Um, and I, I feel like, you know, Link's Awakening, I would not hesitate to spend $60 on it. But if you really had to pick one or the other, I would say Splatoon 2 is, probably has more bang for your buck. But I do feel like Link's Awakening stays with you a little bit more. Next up, Nintendo Labo. I just combined everything all in one. Uh, what do you, where do you think, uh, where do you think Labo goes? I might be a little, uh, I might, I might, I might give Labo a little bit of credit. I love Labo as an idea, a concept, a product. Every time I bought a Labo, opened it and made it, I did have fun, but then it's over. It's over really quickly. It's, it's something that you can't really replay. You can't unfold it and redo it. Once you've made it, the little games you can play with them are fun, but they don't have replay value. So it does ultimately become very expensive cardboard. Um, also, my house flooded. 
<laughs> way back when, and half my labo got wet and ruined. So no, kinda, not the yeah. labo. <laughs> I kind no! of have a love hate relationship. You know, ironically, the only set that didn't get wet was the fishing rod. So hey, there you go. That. There you well, go. I'm very, I still have that. You know, I want to make it very clear. I'm very. I'm so sorry for for uh, the the flood there. That was um, like six years know. ago. We're fine. Well, obviously, obviously, the labo is is also a tragedy that that got that got uh, messed <laughs> up. But I would say, um, yeah, I think the concept behind labo is ingenious. It is a, mm -hmm. it is wonderful. It feels like wow, this is Nintendo at their most Nintendo. Obviously, you can yeah. make the uh, the joke that it's like, oh, it's are selling cardboard. But I do feel like there is such a genuine fun to putting that together. And and I think you know that that's kind of what Nintendo mm -hmm. is going for. That's kind of like the design philosophy behind a game like Mario Maker or even like WarioWare DIY on the original DS where it's just like, it's fun to make things. It's fun to just feel like, you know, it's satisfying yeah. to put things together, especially when like you're kind of following the directions like it's like it's Ikea furniture. You know, you feel like you see, you feel like a damn genius putting that th these things together and seeing yeah. them actually work. Um, and that initial feeling of like putting that piano together and, and seeing it work, putting that little RC robot car together and seeing it work is incredible but for how much space those damn accessories take up and how much you're actually going to use them i feel like there is such limited appeal with labo at the end of the day where, where it's kind of like okay this is for uh not only people who want to build things and just kind of have that satisfaction but also people who want to make game like code games based on these things because i feel like that's kind of where the replay value comes out of most of these things is like that that toy con garage element of labo but that's that had such limited appeal you know it's pretty much only appealing to like people who want to code their own things um and a lot of people that bought labo were people like me that just wanted to see a piano work or something and you know wanted more of like a game element of it you know maybe like you know a um like a piano teaching a very light one that doesn't really work well because it's a limited piano but maybe a teaching tool or like little little lessons or something about like just music lessons or whatnot i don't know just more to it and it just felt like yeah. there just wasn't enough meat on the bones of most of the games i only really played the the variety kit and a bit of the vr kit the vr was pretty cool did you play breath of the wild in vr yeah i well i tried there was a That's super unique there was a uh, there was a basically like an exploit you could do with like using like the psvr <laughs> or something with it oh. a little bit there is in like you could just kind of set it up where since you could plug an hdmi cable into the psvr some people found ways to be like oh yeah you can kind of get this to work so i did that and then i also <laughs> tried it with like the actual headset and it does work. Um, I think it works better than a lot of people gave it credit for. I think a lot of people were like, oh, the screen quality is horrible and all that. And I'm like, well, it's not great, but it does work. Where do you think the Labo series overall goes in the Pokemon Tournament Fire Emblem Warriors line of thinking? Just like, where does it go on that line? It's, it. I feel like the idea is really cool. I do like it, but it was a real miss as a product. I think it just didn't hit with consumers. It is definitely one of the punching bag products of Nintendo. It's really tough for me to look at the creativeness and how ingenious it is and then say, oh, it's worse than Pokemon Tournament. But as a product, it, yeah, it just doesn't really have that appeal. I don't know. I don't, I definitely don't think it's high. I think it may be the lowest or second lowest. Yeah, of the list I think I so would far. agree. I mean, honestly, it's, it's almost safer just to put it in the lowest. I hate to say yeah. it. I mean, it's really, it's not really a game. Um, something like Lego is great because you can like make it and then unmake it then make something else or make it again this is literally just one thing yeah and, and you look at like overall like i think the cheapest you could get was like the vr kit with just the goggles and like one of the toys for like 40 bucks yeah compared to like fire emblem warriors i just feel like i feel like there was less criticism towards that i feel like there's like as in like there's still criticism but it, it it's not as like a like um, like you know i kind of look at labo and i'm like ah, i don't know about this man i like a lot of things about it but uh there's more stuff i can kind of complain about than stuff i can really praise but i still can't praise it and i still really have a soft spot for it just the idea alone i just feel like there need to be more meat on meat there you know like mm -hmm. it's just like 
even just like if some of the games had like a score attack mode or a time attack mode or something like the, if the fishing yeah. game had that or something but it's basically just like oh fish you see it works and that's pretty much all it is yeah it really wouldn't have been hard to add that stuff in i'm not sure why they they just dropped it they just didn't want to support it after that all right next on the list uh we have we have a classic we have uh <laughs> something that everybody usually considers like one of the best right uh yeah. nintendo uh -huh. published games on switch it's fitness boxing 2 rhythm and exercise Ooh, love this game have you ever played it have you ever played fitness boxing 2 one of the goats of the system if we still did platinum releases on consoles this would clearly be a bestseller now obviously it's gonna look weird having this above fire emblem right now but as the list fills out it's not it's not going to be up there the whole time but I would put it in number one. All right. So. <laughs> Didn't even want to. I like this game. I like this game. I think it's pretty good. I think overall for what it is, it's not bad. It's a, it does give your arms a bit of a workout, whatever. And there's, there's two of them. This is the second one. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it worked out the first time. I think overall, I think overall, I would put it, I'll put it above a... I'll put it above Nintendo Labo. Okay, all right. I'm, I'm gonna say it. I'm not even gonna argue. That's a good thing. I like Nintendo Labo. <laughs> I just, I spent, a, I spent like an hour praising it slightly. I think for what it is, it's pretty good uh, though. Um, it does kind of feel like it's kind of a part of a weird lineup of like Switch games that Nintendo released that feel a little more like Wii Sports, Wii Fit type things without doing it. Um, kind of see that with like, they published Go Vacation, uh, Clubhouse Games, mm -hmm. and they really just did not want to do like, we don't want to do stuff with Miis, we don't want to do stuff with like, you know, the, the Wii Sports aesthetic, Woohoo Island, or random stuff from there. But, um, so, so they kind of contracted these other developers, like a different developer did fitness boxing. Um, they were just like, hey, just, just try to make something, uh, like that. And, you know, even the front cover kind of looks a little Wii Fit like. Yeah, it does. Um, so I... I I think they were just trying to like see if they can like do some of those Wii-esque things without doing them like full blown. Mm -hmm. But I think a game like this is kind of fun and, and neat. But uh, I think uh, I think overall it's not much better than like Nintendo Labo in the grand scheme of uh, Switch games. Or if you want to, I have wanna, no thoughts. I haven't that. played it. I it, it it just looks like a Wii game to me. I never touched it. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't know who I'm talking to anymore. Hey, what? Next up. Next up, it's Super Mario Party. Okay, I got Super thoughts Mario on this Party. one. Super Mario Party. Yeah, and what are they? Uh, it's bad. It's terrible. I would say it's mediocre. No, 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 no. It's really bad. I would put it below Labo. No, you would. Yeah, I would. I think, I think, I think overall, um, Super Mario Party was a step in the right direction, and there is some fun you can have with it. What? What was the? What was the step in the right direction for the? For the? Uh... Uh, the fact that it didn't completely suck ass <laughs> compared to uh, Mario Party 9 and 10. And they didn't go all the way. And the map designs, there wasn't enough maps. There was like three the design, maps. They were super boring. They were very tiny. It just kind of felt like there wasn't like any like alternate paths no there wasn't they were super basic the whole the whole game was like bare bones basic the online was non-existent you couldn't play online with friends you could only play a selection of the mini games like like 10 of them online with friends uh they added support later on where you could do a lot of that stuff so if we're gonna take that into account sure but the newer one that came out was nintendo really fixing the mistake that was that Mario Party game. Yeah, I, I think overall, um, I would put it, I would put it below Fitness Boxing too. I think there is a little more value than like Labo in terms of like a game. I think I got enough fun out of it where I was like, hey, this did its job kind of. All right. It is, it is, it's above Labo. I was being facetious. But I would, I would, I would, uh, I would play Fitness Boxing 2 in a heartbeat. <laughs> good comparison. I just think it was, uh, it, it showed like hope. It showed hope for the future. And uh, obviously uh, Mario Party Superstars, uh, you know, confirmed those 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 hopes were, it was, were validated. It was the final Mario Party mistake I think Nintendo had to make before they finally got it through their heads that we just want Mario Party. Not enough content, but you know, like, hey, it they, they got a few things right enough um, where just like, if you never played a Mario Party before this and you didn't know how decent they can actually be, uh, I think Super Mario Party, you'd be like, that's a pretty good game. But then, you know, you can look at like the N64 and GameCube ones and be like, oh, Jesus, what happened? <laughs> yeah. 
So, next up is Super Mario 3D All-Stars. This might be an interesting debate to have in terms of like where this actually lies in the list. Where do you think Mario 3D All-Stars should lie? Yeah, that is a tough debate. I mean, it really is just three games ported over. It's barely even a Switch game, but it's awesome. And I'm really glad that it happened. That's tough because my brain goes to multiple places. I mean, you go to replay value, you go to sheer fun, you go to how great the games actually were, but then you also go to the fact that they're 64 Wii games. So it's, how do you quantify it in a list like this? Where do you rank it along? If we're if we're trying to rank Switch games, uh, it's got to be lower. If we're ranking it as far as fun games, I'd put it up there with like, Oh, Link's Awakening around that area. Yeah, it's pretty tricky. I think compilations like this are always really hard to figure out like where they actually lie in a list, where, what do you review it as? Because as a compilation um, compared to other ones, it's pretty lacking. Yeah. Uh, barely any extras. You can tell like, oh, you included the soundtracks, but it's just like, okay, you know, <laughs> it's just like, that's kind of like just like an extra that you don't really have to think about including. That's why Nintendo included it. They didn't have to scour through concept art and try to find like, oh man, we're going to make this and then we're going to create like a cool interface to, to flip through everything. You know, like it was just like, nah, we, 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 all, we always have this music on standby. Let's just throw it on there. And, you know, the, the, there was barely, I, there was no like new art made. To, like there wasn't new 3D renders of like, yeah. you know, any characters to be like, oh, it's Mario 3D All-Stars or something. Um, so as a compilation, it's pretty bare bones. You don't even get like whatever save states or anything with like Mario 60, any of the games really. Um, and, you know, lack of options, you know, Mario Galaxy on, on the handheld, you have to use the damn touchscreen for the uh, for the pointer. Um, but it's still the same games that were like, you know, like the, some of the greatest games of all time yeah. on here. You get three of them. And just the fact that they were on Switch, you know, like we're begging them to put like anything from the N64, anything from the GameCube, anything from the Wii on the Switch for the longest time. And pretty much one of the first times that they actually did it was you know three of the greatest games from yeah all those yeah, consoles that's another good point. and you know with with slight upgrades i would put it mm, i would put it below or above link's awakening overall yeah i think that's a good spot and that's also where my mind went when i i mean i mentioned that i was like link's awakening i'd put it around there um interesting concept that for a switch port yeah obviously it was very lackluster but it's hard to put those games any lower. And we were asking for it. And Nintendo was like, fine, fine. Here, here it is. So it's hard to then be like, well, we, we, we could have had more. So, yeah, you're right. I mean, I think... I think it's another easy punching bag. It's something that like everybody's like, oh man, Mario 3D All-Stars. <laughs> yeah, you can make those arguments, but people have done that to death. And it's something where I just kind of look at it as it is. And I see a game that includes three of the greatest games of all time and they have slight upgrades. They look better than they ever officially have before. I would put it below Link's Awakening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I think that's a good spot for it. Next up is uh, new Pokemon Snap. This is getting hotter and hotter. I, uh, I actually really liked this game. I didn't find it had a ton of replay value, which is a shame because I think the game is set up in a way where it's supposed to have a ton of replay value, but I just got kind of sick of doing essentially the same thing over and over and over. Um, but I think it was a great new installment. It's just, it's not the best. It's not my favorite Switch game by any means. It's very forgettable. Like you can easily forget it's even in the library. I think it's in, I think it's in that middle ground again. I think it's somewhere around, uh, the, the Zelda and above Pokken. I think it's definitely better than Pokken. Hmm. You see, I would, I would say probably above 3D All-Stars because I think the amount of attention and love poured into this game is very obvious. It, it's obvious that they didn't just go like, hey, uh, well, let's just do like whatever. Let's just make another Pokemon Snap. Like they were like, no, if we're going to make another Pokemon Snap, we're going to go all in on That's this. That's true. And we're going to make sure like it's beautiful. It has, you know, a good, healthy amount of content. There's more content than I think I was really ever expecting for a pokemon snap sequel yeah and then they added a bunch of extra free content as well yeah so i think overall i would put it below zelda um and above mario 3d all-stars um I, I think pokemon snap is something you really do have to be kind of in the mood for to play uh because it is a much slower game and it's also like you kind of just have to be in that mellowed out mood yeah uh where it's just like hey i'm just gonna play a little bit of pokemon snap 
because sometimes like every every time that I played, I was like, I'm, I'm like, I got I got to do stuff today. <laughs> like I got I got to get something done today. I'm just sitting here playing new Pokemon Snap. Um, but I would say overall, the quality of the title is is fantastic. I think the amount of content there, and I think it delivered pretty much perfectly what it set out to do. Mm-hmm. I can't really think of anything that's like, oh well, didn't do this that well. I mean, like you said, like replayability. Uh, Maybe not the greatest, but I would say I think it accomplished pretty much everything it set out to do And for that I would put it like below Zelda, but above Mario 3D All-Stars Yeah, I agree and I did have a ton of fun with it I think uh, that's gonna be the trend for below Zelda, but above Mario 3D All-Stars because next up is DC Superhero Girls Teen Power I think that can go uh, (laughs) below Zelda or potentially below fitness boxing (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I'm open to either one. I I haven't played it I did. You did? I did for like an hour and a half. Mm. I think it would. Yeah. Uh, I I think overall it is very odd that Nintendo published this game, but overall I think uh, for what it is, it's better than I was expecting. In the state of licensed kids games these days, um, I think it's a miracle that it's as not bad as it is. Okay. Uh, there's not much, there's not really much. I don't know the source material. It is, it's based on a TV show that I've never seen. Uh, I played it just because I, I was, you know, doing my yearly Switch, uh, retrospective kind of recap kind of deal. So I had to play it. And when I played it, I was like, all right, um, like I get it. <laughs> like for, you know, like for little kids, I think it's, I think it, it's fine. It's it's more in depth than it seems in terms of like you know there's there's more to it. There's like little worlds you can run around in and you know, stuff. And that hour so, and a half was just it was enough to tell you it's better than Super Mario Party. Yeah, I, I'd say it's better. I'd say overall there's there's less to complain about. With okay, it. okay, that's. Bad. I'd say I'd say that's the case. Um, next up is Skyward Sword HD. Yeah. This one's this one's kind of tricky to place. Yeah. I think it might be around the 3D All-Stars area. Yeah, no, I agree. I think that a lot of these are going to be tricky for this reason of them being ports. Um, a lot of people complain about the controls in this game. I might have had a different experience where I actually enjoyed it. I didn't really have a problem with the controls at all. Uh, the game wasn't as fun as I remembered from back in the day, but... Definitely still a great game. I mean, even the worst Zelda is a great game. And I think it was a pretty solid port. It's a similar thing. They didn't really do much or change much or add much or or do anything really over, you know, the previous release, just like the 3D All-Stars. So I think we got to just stay around that area. This is the definitive way to play, though. I do think the Wii version oddly has some benefits. Uh, Like, I feel like if you're gonna play with motion controls, I do think the motion controls are better in the Wii version, mm-hmm. uh, just based on the fact that the Joy-Con are, I feel, are more unreliable. And I just felt like, like there were so many times where, at least using the items, using the Joy-Con, just it didn't work great for me. So okay. I would constantly switch back between. I would use uh, motion controls for the sword play, but then after that, if I would go to like a puzzle or something and need an item, I would sw- I would go into the menu, switch the button controls, and then use, um, use the item with the button controls, and that that got kind of tiring after a while. But I do think the HD version does help to just showcase what makes skyward sword like valid or <laughs> in my opinion of just showing like hey this is this is a good game i think they went a little too far in just re- relying on the motion control setup uh i think overall like they 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 could have just kind of like held back a little bit and just really focused on like okay like what is the true reason behind these motion controls because i feel like in a lot of cases like why do i have to use it for the bird why do i have to use it for yeah. uh any of that it had it had a uh, pro controller support as well that i think worked pretty well yeah i think i think that was an awesome addition to make an awesome feature to have i did not care for the button control for the sword play i felt like it was a little more awkward but mm-hmm. a lot of people preferred it that way i also didn't like how the the camera was Matt, you had to help hold the L button. Made me feel like it was like a PSP game or something. Yeah. I would say, hmm. You did get three Marios for the price of one, as opposed to one Zelda. You do, but they did more to Skyward Sword HD. Mm-hmm. 
but they ne kind of needed to. Mm, yeah, they could. So I mean, they really had like... no choice but to. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, it's either above or below 3D All Stars because I do think, like, I I don't think, like, I do think they could have added more. They added more to previous Zelda remasters, but you know, I think they added enough in terms of like fixes and just making sure it like was better. Yeah, didn't Switch. Wind Waker get like an extra area on the Wii? The Wii U? I think Twilight Princess HD did. Like, you, yeah, they you got scan, like, like the amiibo yeah. when you got like, I think it was called like the Cave of Shadows. Yeah. So yeah, screw that game. <laughs> Definitely below yeah. Mario. <laughs> yeah, I'd say I'd say that makes sense. I think it's a valid remaster, and uh, it's it's a good game to get on Switch. Though I would say, out of the three major Zelda titles that are out right now in terms of Breath of the Wild, Link's Awakening, Skyward Sword HD. I'd say it's at the bottom of the list of those in terms of like must haves. I think this is more for like the diehards, you know? Next up we have Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. I don't like it. I think that's going, I might be like going it. below Nintendo Labo. Yeah, I don't, I'm uh, so glad you said that. Above. No, 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 we can go <laughs> below. That's fine. It's got the ugliest art style I've ever seen for a remake. It was a port I didn't need. I would rather play the original any day of the week i'd say i'd say if we're being real here i would put it i would put it yeah i'd put it below lab okay <laughs> yeah uh, moving on to <laughs> i'm looking at it i'm just like i don't really know we're agreeing a lot more than i thought we would i like this <laughs> yeah i mean like i was kind of thinking i'm like ah dude it is hideous like i i don't care what anyone says i'm sorry i love you if you're watching and you like it it's the ugliest remake I've ever seen. It is hideous. I just think it doesn't add no really much of it value, makes it worse. In, even in terms of gameplay and the original visuals. art style is still great. It makes it worse. Like I just feel like it's just kind of there. It's just something where like sure it's a way to play these games on Switch, but I kind of look at it like it's just like they obviously rushed it out for the holiday just to have, you know, the Pokemon remakes there and, and, and everything. It was also, it was sourced out to a team that had previously only ever made one mobile game, which is fine, but that's clearly why it looks the way it looks. Which I don't get why Game Freak and the Pokemon franchise are sourcing out their games to companies like that. Well, they could probably get it done like quicker. I think that, I think the time is, is mainly the thing. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I do think to some extent it's something that's like you do get pretty much every type of Pokemon game on Switch. You know, like you get like, you know, Let's Go and Sword and Shield. But then you get like something like this that's just genuinely pretty much the exact same game. Like overhead perspective and everything uh, just with like a new art style. Um, but overall, I just feel like it really needed more. Everything. It doesn't feel needed more. Everything. Yeah, it doesn't. It needs I, even just the different lighting. I think would help, or uh -huh. like it would kind of at least make it look more like Link's Awakening, um, which is a great way to kind of take like, an old school top down game like that and just kind of update it for for a modern uh, for a modern audience. Where this kind of feels like it's just like, well, this is a way to play Diamond and Pearl on Switch, and you know, it's just like that's pretty much all it is. Um, so I'm, I'm okay with it being there, but next up, next up, I got, I got something to say about this one. What do you, what do you got to say about Big Brain Academy, Brain versus Brain? Look, we're friends, right? We're, like, not, we're inseparable, right? Nothing's ever going to come between us. I've never, I've never played it. Yeah, I have. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'll put it above, I'll put it above Pokemon. <laughs> uh, well, let me, let me think, let me think. I would say it's above Labo, and here's why. You see, Big Brain Academy is pretty good, uh, you know, on the Wii. Big Brain Academy Wii degree. It's pretty much just a little, little, uh, you know, uh, you know, little brain teaser collection. Just like little, little mini games that are little brain teasers. You know, make you think a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and it was fun. It was fun on Wii because like it had multiplayer, and it was kind of a fun little like you know like two player multiplayer thing where it's just like oh who's who's smarter. Um, and this one just has so such little content and so much of it is just recycled from the wii game and i'm just like is it really that hard is it really that hard <laughs> to make new big brain academy brain teasers after like what like 13 years 15 years 14 years <laughs> no big brain academy game i don't know i was very disappointed by it it's not bad i think it goes below fire emblem actually wow, you that? keep pushing it up more and more maybe you like it 
Yeah, I'll put it above Splatoon <laughs> 2. But I'd say I'd say I'd say below Fire Emblem Warriors. I I was pretty disappointed by uh just just that that game in general. But it isn't bad. It's fine in a vacuum. But uh you know, and I'm not even like the biggest Big Brain Academy guy. I just played the Wii game, and I was always like that was pretty fun. And now I'm just like this is. It's the same game, but worse. <laughs> like, like, okay, okay, here's another thing. Like, multiplayer-wise, like, it is horrible. It is literally, like, you play a multiplayer game, it's over in five minutes. And it's just, like, for a game called Brain vs. Brain, I'm like, 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 no. <laughs> Fuck off. I'm not, I'm not a fan. Uh, the original Bayonetta. Bayonetta 1 on Switch. Uh, it's a toughie, again, because it's a port situation, but I love the game to death. I, I really do enjoy that game. Um, mm-hmm. They did add uh, uh, Nintendo-themed outfits. You could be like Link and Zelda and stuff. Um, so there was some cool support there. Personally, I would put it, and this is a big bias because I'm a huge hack and slash fan, between Snap and Zelda as a game. Now, if we're talking ports, I might actually backtrack on that and put it below Snap, but above above uh the mario games because it had a ton of extra support here's the thing in terms in terms of just like what what this game adds to being on the nintendo switch overall in comparison to like other games and i think overall as its status as as a game as a really good game i think it i think below snap makes sense just because like you know it was kind of thrown in as a bonus with Bayonetta True. 2. You know, yeah. we never really needed mm -hmm. Bayonetta 1, even though, like, I, I would take it every, you know, every day to have Bayonetta 1 on Switch. But it was always just kind of a bonus thing. So overall, you know, if we kind of, kind of combine every single line of thought in terms of, like, hey, um, this is, you know, this is an amazing game, but it doesn't, it, it, it was always kind of, like, just thrown in as a bonus to the Switch library, mm -hmm. and what does it mean as a Switch game? I think overall, like, if we combine those, I think just moving it one step below. Okay. One step below. I think that makes sense. I'm fine with that. I really, really do All love right. the game. I, I played I played a bit of Bayonetta 2 this year. Yeah. Um, and uh, that was something on the Wii U. Mm, oh, okay. I played the Wii U version. But um, overall, like, I was just like, damn, I was missing out. No, you really <laughs> like, were. Like, I tried... Yeah, I tried. I tried Bayonetta two when it first came out, and I was like, "Oh, okay," and I was like, "This is good," but it's just like it didn't grab me. And then I tried it more, and I'm just like, <laughs> "Bayonetta two, by the way, is probably, in my opinion, going right next to that Bayonetta one when we get there." Oh man, well, well, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there soon. It's uh, it's in the middle of our uh, of our stack here. Uh, next up is Kirby in the Forgotten Land. Okay, I'm big on. Where this do you one. think that goes? I'm big on this one, Kirby games have been pretty okay. There's been some good, there's been some really rough. Uh, Kirby Forgotten Land was a big reshake for the franchise, taking a lot of inspirations from Mario Odyssey, obviously, but I think even in parts, you know, the concept of something like Breath of the Wild, which is completely shaking up a core formula of a franchise and doing something different and it's still working. Not saying it's like Breath of the Wild, but taking that approach. Uh, and it really worked and it really paid off. It's by far the best Kirby game. I love it to pieces, a ton of replay value, especially if you want to go through and collect everything. I mean, I am really up there on this one. I'm probably still below Fire Emblem. Um, personal preference, I would put it above Splatoon, uh, but I would defer to you and see your thoughts on that. I really liked it. Yeah, I think I think it's a great step forward for the Kirby series. There's not really a ton that's, ever, that's really like, ah, oh, this is kind of bad about it or, or yeah. whatnot um you know like even, even things that are like kind of like how like things in the distant run at a lower frame rate i find that to be more charming if anything yeah i never had an issue with that yeah that's always that that, that feels more like even though I, i'm sure it wasn't really a stylistic choice i just mm -hmm. think it it's more fun to look at than it isn't you know like, yeah. i'm just kind of like oh that's cute um i think uh, you know, I think visually it's great. Uh, audio wise, it's fantastic. Yep. Yeah, audio was great. Yeah, gameplay wise, you know, they, they did a great job translating Kirby to 3D. Um, I think, you know, like there's more of like Mario 3D world in there mm -hmm. than, than anything. I think it's really, um, I think it takes a lot of, uh, a lot of inspiration from that game. And, so, so it's not like this big revol revolution, but like Kirby's never really been that. So it, it's something where like as a really good, fun, sim you know, more simple 3D platformer, 
I think it hits it out of the park. I think it, mm. it's it's amazing at everything it does. I would say below or above Splatoon 2. Okay. And I'm, and I'm more of a you know platformer guy, so it's just like you know like I, I love this kind of thing. I'd say mm, you said you'd say uh, your personal preference would be above Splatoon 2. But I'm not. I don't mind either way. You know what? <laughs> you know what? We'll, we'll throw it there. We'll throw it there. Why not? I'm I'm feeling a little feeling a little risky today. A little charitable we'll there. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're, okay. Next up is Pokemon Legends Arceus. Oh God, dude! I love this one too. Um, you know, we could almost take a lot of what we just said and, and just copy paste. Uh, they reshook up the thought formula, literally this time borrowing from Breath of the Wild. Um, also Monster Hunter a lot. Uh, also even, uh, Pokemon in the distance get really choppy frame rates. And I kind of like that too, because it kind of looked like the little sprites from like Game Boy or something. I really love that. I mean, it was the Pokemon game I always wanted. Granted, it had the Monster Hunter elements, which I enjoyed, were never a part of my dream when I thought about a Pokemon game like this, but it worked for me. I really did enjoy it. I spent hours in it, even more hours searching for shinies, which became a whole part of the meta uh, playing that game. I'm really high on it. Honestly, I don't know if I would confidently say it's as tight of a package as Kirby is as far as you know, that's a lot of bad you can say about this game, and there's really not a lot of bad you can say about Kirby, like you said. But for fun and for giving me what I wanted, I had more fun in this game than Kirby, for sure. You see, like, I just don't think I like Pokemon. I don't, I just, <laughs> I never really cared. That's I fair. I never really cared. I tried playing Pokemon Legends Arceus and I could appreciate the, uh, I could appreciate the evolutions and changes they made mm -hmm. to the formula to create mm -hmm. just like a much more unique and, and modern feeling experience. It didn't, it still didn't grab me okay. personally. So Pokemon Legends Arceus, um, like I can really appreciate a game like this, but I'll kind of leave this up to you in terms of where to place it um but i might i might put it like a couple couple pegs below wherever you okay. decide to place it okay look if my bias was coming into play it's under fire emblem warriors i will be less biased Ooh. i will be less biased and say that it should definitely be above pokemon snap i would say above i'll do i'll do above Link's awakening how about that that sound that sound good i'm liking this you know we've got something great. going here <laughs> Yeah, all right, all right. But now, now we got Cadence of Hyrule, Crypt of the Necro Dancer featuring The Legend of Zelda. I actually love this too. I actually really, really love this. Um, this was a fantastic game. Uh, people, yeah, that made Crypt had the keys to Zelda. I think they did a fantastic job. The music is absolutely fire. Some of the best music in a video game. Uh, the gameplay is super fun. I, when I first played that game, it was on stream, and I played it on that stream enough until i beat the entire game in like 40 minutes because you can you can do it like really quick uh i just love it i just love it i adore it um i mean i'm above snap again what do you think uh yeah i think i think overall it makes sense to be like um around that uh, uh, below link's awakening because like you know like it's just it, it's more of like kind of like a, a cute little like hey you know like look and it's just like a spin-off zelda title and I don't think, you know, it really eclipses like a, a true, you know, like 2D Zelda like Link's Awakening. It's tricky though, because I only played it for a little bit. So I don't really have like a, a very d d big opinion on it. I don't, I don't got big things to say other than I think it's really cool. I think it's a great idea. I think they really executed it wonderfully. And uh, they even expanded upon it with DLC and all that. So yeah, no, it's fantastic. I, now I will throw this out there. Do you want to dunk it under snap? Because I'm starting to wonder if maybe it should be under snap, but I'm good either way. I think under snap makes sense. Okay, yeah, that's you what know, I was like thinking I think, too. I think, yeah, I think it's a it's a really cool idea, really really awesome title. But I think I think new Pokemon Snap did a little more in terms of like just like you know giving fans what they wanted and yeah and all of that. Uh, Clubhouse Games 51 Worldwide Classics. All right, we have the first. We have the first one above Fire Emblem Three Houses. Pretty happy. Hey, hey, you uh, you came on my little collab video and reviewed that game for me, so I I will let you have that. I know you really love that game. It's really damn good. Fifty one games <laughs> for the price There's of one. There's only three houses in what? Fire Emblem. <laughs> I think overall it's really great at what it does. Um, there's a few little quirks in there, like you can't play like four player bowling. I don't know why. Um, you know and 
there's like a couple little things in there, but I think overall, uh, I think it executes what it set out to do blissfully. I would put it, um, I'm gonna be unbiased. I think, uh, I think above cadence. Oh wow, you're going that low with it. Yeah, if we're not being biased, I would put it above everything so far. But uh, I would put it above cadence. No wait, did I, I say I, above I, or below? You said it. You said, I can't remember. I I, I it's love above now. I love how much you love that game. That's so. It's really good. So great. Uh, it's yeah, really good. You, you you do what you want there, buddy. What are buddy. your thoughts on it? What do you think about that game? I had some really fantastic memories when that game came out. Kim and I um, just up late at night in bed on my Switch, just playing that game, all the little mini games until we play through them all. I have a very soft spot for it. I don't think it's the best thing ever, but I, I have a soft spot well, for it. Well, what's bad about so. it? Every you're game's right, you're online. Right. You are right. Every game has <laughs> no, online there's multiplayer. No. There's multiple variants of each game. That if you really true. want to be fair, it's mm -hmm. not even 51 Worldwide Classics. There's like 200 in there, technically. Checkers, chess, yeah, all, all of those. They even go outside the house. They go outside the clubhouse. Yeah, Definitely. I don't know how they came up with 51 games. That's very innovative, you know. I mean, chess, yeah. chess is brilliant. I don't know how they invented that. It's a good damn version of chess. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. It's really good. I would say uh, uh, Game Builder Garage, I think, goes... I, I think that goes above Big Brain Academy or below. That's fair. Hot take. It It's very frustrating to play. I love the idea and the concept, but it forces you to play through hours of tutorials just to unlock all the mechanics, even though early on you get the hang of it, but then it still forces you to play through all of that crap. That was very frustrating. So for me, I don't care where that goes. Uh, yeah, I think overall it it was kind of like just like a, a quick thing. They just kind of threw together as a way to just have like just kind of salvage a lot of the assets from Labo. Um, you know, like the, the ToyCon Garage element of Labo and to mm. just kind of make it into its own little like game builder game. Um, but overall, I do kind of feel like it's... Uh, like it's just really half baked, and like none of the ideas really make sense. The fact that you have to, you like, you can look up games, but you can only look them up by ID, and you can't even like. There's not even like a little thing where you can just scroll through games available. You have to find the games elsewhere. That's just classic Nintendo, really. Well, it's like I don't even understand it because like that that's more dangerous for kids. <laughs> like True. it's just like you're, they're gonna go online on message boards to find Game Builder Garage levels. Like, that it's just is like, true. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> going on going on craigslist like it's just like you can't like hey, out, out i don't of side, get it. out of mind for nintendo that's all they care about overall i think like it, it's kind of cool the stuff you can do with it and it's a budget title it's only like 30 bucks nothing crazy like you know it's just kind of like they put it out it's just like hey if you want this if you want like a easy kid-friendly game building kind of design tool here you go and it does that okay but it's so lacking in, in a lot of areas to actually make it more than just fine if you want something like that. But if you want something like that, I would probably just recommend like picking up a PS4 for cheap and, and like buying Dreams or, or something along those lines or or uh, even buying an old DS and getting like WarioWare DIY. That's that true. was kind of like a similar experience, but it was much better. Um, so I think I think between making a big brain academy and fitness boxing sandwich makes sense for that one um next up is damon x machina Dude, what do you have to say about that uh i didn't say much nice about it in my review of it either it's not fun it was underbaked um they they tried to fix a lot from what the beta uh the issues in the beta but it still just wasn't it's just boring. I don't really know. There's no. It's, I mean, it's just mech. You just fly around. You shoot things, right? It's just kind of. It's kind of boring. If you like mechs, maybe it's great. Um, it didn't entertain me for more than a couple hours. I felt like like the gameplay mechanics were like kind of fun, but it's just like there wasn't really anything fun to do with them. Yeah. Where it's just like, oh, it's fun to shoot with a mech. Yeah, it is because you're shooting with a mech. Yeah, it's kind of like they had an idea to make a mech game, but then didn't really know where to go with it. Yeah, at least that's just how how I perceived it when I played it a little bit. I was just kind of like. It's just kind of like boring. I mean, like the the mechanics are, are fun enough, but it's just it doesn't feel unique enough, and it just kind of feels like like you know a, a Japanese mech game. That that's it. <laughs> go go wild. Yeah. Do whatever you want. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, like I saw like a couple like six out of tens for this game, six to seven out of tens. Mm -hmm. I think I think that's fair if you're being unbiased. I think 
I think this game was so like what I think it was revealed at like E3 2018 and it was just like it was so forgettable after that. No, it was super like they, they kept on talking about it during like each Nintendo Direct and like every single time like nobody had anything to say like what do you have to say about this game like nobody really had anything to say it is a game though like when we're looking at things like game builder garage big brain which was kind of lacking it is it is a game though and some people might like it because of that i might put it below fire emblem warriors maybe if i if if i have my way if i'm my way with this <laughs> i might put it below uh Honestly, I might put it below Pokemon at this point. Ooh, at the end? There's more to this list we haven't done yet. So that doesn't mean it's the worst Nintendo Switch game of all time. It's just the worst out of these. Here's the thing though, Pokemon, while it was very ugly, it was the same game again that you could play somewhere else. At least Damon X Machina is its own thing. Yeah, but that's not its fault. It's a remake. What do you expect it to be? Well, that's, uh, yeah, but that's kind of what I'm, saying i mean you got to remake you had a whole a whole ass game you know i'm gonna i'm just gonna be straight with you like <laughs> i don't think uh if, if if you had to choose between playing pokemon brilliant diamond and damon x machina right now i think i know what you'd pick even though you don't like pokemon brilliant diamond i'm kind of, I'm kind of 50 50 on it i don't want to play either of them i guess it doesn't matter they both suck fine whatever <laughs> i'll throw it at the end that doesn't mean it's bad it's just like right now like out of everything like i'm just like I don't know. I just feel like there's more to discuss with Nintendo Labo. There's more to discuss with Mario Party. And I feel like it's easier to convince, you know, like yourself or, or other people to be like, hey, do you, what do you want to play? Do you want to play Super Mario Party or Damon X Machina? Who are you hanging out with who's going to say <laughs> Damon X, X Machina? <laughs> okay, that's fair. All right, next up, Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. I I would put it... Uh, a uh above splatoon 2 damn really you just had you just had this damn argument about pokemon brilliant diamond being like oh man it's the same game again this is the same game no again. it's not it had a whole they added a whole um epilogue to it at the end of the game there's a whole like 20 hour epilogue pokemon brilliant diamond added new graphics yeah pokemon brilliant diamond sucks we're, mo we're moving past that scott <laughs> this is a remaster this is all new graphics kind of no, it is. It looks completely different. Like, if you put those side by side, Shulk doesn't even look like the same person anymore. I'm going to keep bringing it down until you give me a reason why. No, <laughs> <laughs> what? Give me a better reason. It's going down. Each it's one second. of the best JRPGs of all time. It had a complete visual overhaul. They added like 20 hours of new story at the end. Uh,. I don't know, man. I really like it. I don't know what to tell you. You put it where you want. Yeah, I think below Splatoon makes sense. I think that makes sense. You know, keep it, you know, keep it at arm's arm's length. Tetris 99. Tetris 99. I love Tetris 99. I'm willing to put that maybe. Mm, it's really good. It's really good. There's a lot of content in there. And, uh, you know, you, you, you have so many different themes. You have so many different themes. It's a new way to play Tetris. It's one of the best 99 games they've done. I don't know. I'd put it a below maybe Xenoblade. Uh, it's really good. It's really good. No, it is. I like it. I played it a lot. Um, I mean, it's Tetris, but... I would say above or below Link's Awakening. Do it. We need to make some progress here. Below Link's Awakening. Um, Fitness Boxing 1. What do you think about this one? My my hands are off. They're not. Then My hands are not in the mitts. I'll put it right below Fitness Boxing Love too. it. That's where or I was going to put it. Or just to make things a little more questionable, below DC Superhero Girls Team Power. Just to get, just right, to mix it up. up. <laughs> just to just to just to keep things a little a little fancy. I'll put it back where it belongs, right below <laughs> Fitness Boxing too. Mario Kart Live Home Circuit. I really enjoyed that game. I thought it was super unique. It works fantastic. It works way better than you would expect. It literally is a full Mario Kart game that you play in real life. Um, I took the little toy car to an actual go-kart track and attached it to an actual go-kart and raced around a like quarter mile go-kart track and it worked. I played the game like that. I think it's sick. So up to you. <laughs> that, that's that's a little tricky considering like, you know, that, that situation not many people are gonna be in. <laughs> you can you can do the coolest I think thing of all time with people any game. have taken it to a go-kart track. Gone, you could have you could have gone to a go-kart track and bring that with Damon X Machina and you would have been like, this game is sick. 
I, was, I, I went on. I went to go kart with Damon X Machina. I had so much fun with Damon X Machina. I think. I think there's no, an but... argument there that that game specifically worked better because it was a go kart. That is fair. I will say, um, it is very reliant on as much as you're willing to put into it. Yeah, uh, it's kind of similar to like Metopia, Nintendo Labo, that kind of thing, where it's like Metopia. It's it's not fun if you're not gonna make weird ass me's and mm -hmm. and throw them in there and stuff. Uh, Mario Kart Live Home Circuit isn't fun if you're not gonna go above and beyond with creativity and make like cool tracks, make um, you know come up with fun ideas, or you have the space for it. Us as grown adults, sure, but can you imagine having that game when you were like nine? Oh yeah, it would have been amazing. Mm -hmm. So mm, I would say because like. Overall, even when I was nine, I'd probably still prefer to play like Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Um, I'd probably put this around the Pokémon Tournament area. It's got to be above it, but D better I'm okay than Pokémon Tournament. <laughs> mm, better yeah. than Pokémon Tournament, eh? Yeah, for the sheer creativity in this and and uh, in the technical know-how that they made this thing work. I don't know. I think it's pretty pretty impressive pretty ingenious it's more of a fully fleshed out game what are the different you have like 40 courses in mario kart live but they're all the same they're all it's literally like oh this has bubbles on it and i'm just like you know what i'll put it above pokemon tournament to humor you when you get a mushroom in the game your cart in real life goes faster i'll put it above pokemon tournament to humor you my true <laughs> opinion is that me. it's below yeah <laughs> uh either way luigi's mansion 3 where does this one go? I would say it's probably around the Kirby Splatoon 2 range. Yeah, I agree. I think it fixes a lot of the problems of Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, uh, even though that game was was good. Um, it still had a little bit of like, kind of like, a, you know, things that a lot of people just were like, I don't really like about this. And I think Luigi's Mansion 3 does a good job kind of like combining the good and, and the, the pros of both the first Luigi's Mansion and Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. I think it does a really good job of that. Um, you know, I, I still haven't beaten it, but, uh, I got probably like halfway through, so I still need to go through it. But, uh, where do you think, where do you think that this one lies? I agree. I think it was pretty brilliant from start to finish. Every floor introduced new mechanics and new visuals. I think it was really impressive. Uh, I put it above Xenoblade for sure. Um, and just in that, in that range, I might even be closer to kirby well i mean like if you compare it to splatoon 2 i think it's it's more of a fair comparison considering like hey this one does have online multiplayer as well you have the scare scraper <laughs> you have you have the eight player mini games that you can play and all that that um, is true so i think i think splatoon 2 might be a little more like fully fleshed out if you want to compare compare them as like multiplayer and single player experiences but i do think luigi's mansion is the superior single player experience um, I don't know. Where do you think? Above or below Splatoon? I like it where you got it. For time's sake. All right. <laughs> Boom. Pokemon Sword. It grew on me. It grew on me. It, it was... It so was above Pokemon Brilliant Diamond? A lo a definitely above. A lot of controversy around it with reused assets. It did feel a little bit lazy. It was a little ugly. Um, but the wild area was really fun. Um, I still spent a lot of time in it. I mean... I'm probably closer to around the Fire Emblem Warriors than all the way down there. But it's got to be above Big Brain. That's all I really care about at this point. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I can't win with this. Um, I would say regardless of like, you know, like what people think about it now, I think in like 10 years, people are going to be like, man, why isn't like Pokemon like, Sword and Shield was my favorite Pokemon game and stuff. You know, it's always it's always going to be like ever like it's always going to change and people mm -hmm. are always going to be nostalgic for what they grew up with. So it's just like the the opinions always going to change. I don't really think it ever like it's ever going to be like it ever matters that much with Pokemon games because like people are still going to buy and people are still going to enjoy them. And, you know, it's something that's like people are always going to look at like a certain generation regardless of like, oh, well, they removed so much and and all this and all that but like you said like they did add and they did change some things with this one i would say below new pokemon snap and above clubhouse games okay thank you <laughs> pikmin 3 deluxe uh that game added literally nothing right i'm pretty sure it was just pikmin on it added a lot did it yeah like <laughs> it just it just controls worse now. <laughs> That's <laughs> just the it, problem. What did you it don't add? have the Wii remote. You have you have co-op throughout the campaign. 
some other things. <laughs> Pikmin 3 Deluxe. It added a lot. It added co-op during the campaign. I do know that. Okay. There's like an entire... There's a prologue now. Okay. They they added they added a decent amount. Okay. They like, added let's, so let's much honest. stuff. I'm yeah. Mhm. Mm a lot what was do, added. What do you think? Squat up with a friend. Look at that deluxe Oh look, editions, deluxe editions. Play. All your Set DLC. Your pace. Difficulty settings. Mm. The Piclopedia, that's pretty big. Okay. Look at that. Okay. That's pretty cool. All right. That's pretty cool. Okay. I love Pikmin 3. Uh, it is fantastic. I think overall, while it does add a decent amount. I think the Wii U version still controls better. I think that's kind of the uh, the main issue there. Um, I would say it belongs below Bayonetta. Okay, I agree. I love the game. I think it's a fantastic game. Yeah, I just think the Switch version maybe you know it has its pros, it has its cons. Yeah, I don't think they really added anything to write home about. But uh, Metroid Dread is up there. It's a fantastic game. I don't really know. Uh, if it, if it competes fully with a lot of these big boys. But I think it sits comfortably below a lot of the big boys. What do you think? I agree. It's it's well-rounded. There's nothing bad to say about it. You can't really pick flaws. It's a very concise experience. So definitely above Arceus. Um, I'm willing to go above Xenoblade. Thank you. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to contest that. Because uh, I don't have I don't have anything really to... Uh, to add to the Xenoblade discussion because I, I haven't experienced enough of it, but uh, I really loved Metroid Dread. Um, you know, I, I think Luigi's Mansion 3 is a more like fleshed out big experience where Metroid Dread is just a great return to 2D Metroid. Um, you know, and, and it just and it and it's just that in general. It doesn't even really feel like oh man a comeback. Like oh man, after all these years, finally, it just feels like feels like metroid never never left you know like it just yeah. feels like it's just like boom like here here's a new one uh and i think it's fantastic i think it's, oh, it's great. great um you know there is some there are some people you know that will say it's just like oh man you know it's just like you know it's too short for 60 dollars, all that stuff i got a decent amount of time out of it but you know overall i think like the games above it offer more more than it and i think metroid dread offers like a very refined experience if you know you like these you know you, you you'll get a lot out of metroid dread yeah yeah i wouldn't have wanted it to be too much longer i think it was a good pacing yeah for sure uh next up is super smash brothers ultimate thank god something goes above that is there any debate no there there's not debate? i was gonna say the same thing finally something to knock off fire emblem that game is perfect i mean what can you say what do you even need to say i would say i would say mm -hmm. uh that i think uh i don't know i think i think uh you know they, they did take away a few things where it's, you know like i i have a lot of nostalgia for a lot of the stuff brawl had uh that was just these extra little doodads uh that you know they might have simplified like you know they simplified the trophies and turned them into spirits and you know there's something to say about that but overall i think this is the best um you know smash brothers has ever been overall it's the there, best there's, fighter really there's be ever been uh all right all right uh kirby star allies uh this might be i'd say it's above super mario party <laughs> yeah it's not good i it's agree above. this is down there and i love i love this style of like kirby game but i do feel like this one is was a super downgrade from yeah the previous games uh you know the 3ds ones triple deluxe uh after triple deluxe and planet robobot um, this one just felt like a, a super downgrade. It didn't even feel like, you know, like, oh, the gimmick of, like, oh, the, the, the enemies are your friends and stuff. Like, it didn't feel that unique. It didn't really feel like it's, like, oh, man, like, this is just different and, and special from the 3DS ones. No, it just felt like the 3DS ones, but simpler and worse. Um, you know, like, I, agree. I don't know. I, I, I'd say it probably belongs... I liked what you had it. I don't know. I think it's better i i'd rather play it than all of these how about this i'd rather play it than all of these that I think is true. it's not as like badly designed or like just stupid as like super mario party so i think i think it belongs right there that that sounds that sounds okay that makes sense all right mario tennis aces thoughts i enjoyed it for like two days and then i got over it real quick um, not one of the best tennis games, not one of the worst tennis games, probably just around Kirby again. Like it's just doesn't have much content. It doesn't offer much. What's there is there and it's not necessarily bad. 
it's just no content. It did have the story mode though, which I liked. I would say it's above Kirby just because the gameplay I do feel like was improved a lot from like previous games. They did add a lot of like intricacies. They did add a lot to it that made it like, oh wow, this is like, this is a step up and this is like well thought out and everything. Um, I think that was really like, I think that was the best part about it. But, um, and they did add to the content later, but like, I don't know, like it's something where it's just like, when you when you kind of when you kind of play around with me a launch like that i'm not gonna come back you know so it's just something where even though they added so many characters and you know a couple new courts and all of that i don't know i think it goes in kind of the okay territory of like pokin fire emblem and, and mario tennis uh i think it's just okay i agree now hyrule warriors definitive edition this is tricky because like i think there is so much stuff in this game I think it is truly the definitive version of that Wii U game and 3DS port. Um, but it's still Hyrule Warriors at the end of the day. So I don't really yeah. know. It's just like, I feel like it kind of still belongs. I think it's better than Fire Emblem Warriors. Yeah, because um, it's Zelda. But I mean, like, it, it's just, just better. They got more stuff going on. They got, there's more meat on that bone. And it's also, uh, I don't know. I'd put it above Pokin just because, you know, like, it's, you know, there's there's so much stuff. But at the end of the day, it's still, it's still a Warriors game. It's still Hyrule Warriors from the Wii U. Yeah, I I mean, I don't, you can put it there. It's fine. I would put it right next to Warriors. So either way, it's fine. Just above Fire Emblem. There, there's more, there's more depth here. There's more, there's more thought that goes into this when it's just like you see it above Pokin. You're like, oh, wow, they must have thought about this. Paper Mario. Paper Mario, the Origami King. I couldn't stand the mechanics of this game. I the last couple couldn't Paper, stand. Couldn't stand the last couple Paper Mario games. Great story, great writing, great visuals, great comedy and humor. All of that is wonderful. I hated that rotating combat mechanic. It was insufferable, boring, pointless, tedious. Whatever word I want to use. Um, I mean, it's down there, man, for me. Like, I just couldn't finish it. I couldn't enjoy it. Yeah, I think I think visually, presentation-wise, encompassing graphics, audio, story, I think it's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, story-wise, I mean, like, it's not like, oh, my God. It's just like, are you thinking about what they're putting out there? More so, like... Like, you know, it was, it was, it was well written. It's fun. The, the gameplay mechanics, I do feel like are both a step up and a step down from the previous game, Color Splash, where Color Splash was also very annoying. Yeah. But the, the battles felt much more like warranted. The battles now feel completely worthless. And after just doing this, doing like battles a couple times, the puzzles just get like, they're, they're really cool at first, but then like you start to see repeats and it's just something that it's just something extra to do it's just kind of yeah. like like this doesn't really add this just adds another step to battling and it doesn't really there's not a ton to this where it's cool at first but it wears out it's welcome uh pretty early on i put it below kirby but above big brain academy i agree i'm not a fan of that game so i mean i am and i am not so yeah that works for me. I think I think it's pros kind of lifted above like Big Brain Academy, but it's cons at least kind of sets it down in kind of the uh, the dungeon where it's already at. Uh, Captain Toad. Captain Toad. It's a really cute game and it's really fun. I like the little diorama puzzle games. Um, also the co-op, I believe it has now in the in that version is cute and fun. Yeah, they released like full blown DLC for it. Like yeah. they, they released like a whole ass like. I can't be too levels, mad at that one. I, I think people all forgot. I would kind of put it around Pikmin 3. Okay. Uh, mainly because, like, I do kind of feel like the controls have been a little, like, neutered. Where it's just, like, because, like, it was on the Wii U and now uh, now a lot of things just feel a little more, like, uh, a, little, a little more awkward on Switch. Just the fact that, like, oh, man, you have to use, like, I don't know. They, they do a couple things where, like... Yeah, on the Wii U, they would use the two, two screens and, and touch screen while you're on the TV and all that a little more. So it, it can feel a little more awkward on the Switch. Um, so I feel like it kind of fits with Pikmin 3 there because Pikmin 3 is similar where it does feel a little worse on Switch. But um, you could just play in handheld for Captain Toad. So maybe above it, but below Bayonetta. Live Alive. I'm down for this one to be a little higher. I don't know about you. But my, I like it. my really fun copy of the game is currently sealed. Uh, I 
it came out the same day as Xenoblade, and I've been playing Xenoblade, so... Well, no, 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 it came out a week before, so you just got... <laughs> you just got... You, you just need a better time management. What what came out the same day? Something came out the same day as Xenoblade. A or Digimon. Digimon. Right, yeah, 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 you're right. My time management sucks. I have no excuse. I didn't play it. What do you want from me? <laughs> oh, my time, oh, my time management is horrible, considering that I played Live Alive while you were probably actually doing work. <laughs> uh, so I was... Uh, yeah, I think I think this is a really cool game. I think it's uh it's the most accessible of like a, like a lot of like more retro RPGs, uh, JRPGs. I think um, the fact that it has multiple different playable characters and each of them like you know, oh, I mean like they they all have different playable scenarios and they're all pretty quick. Like you can get through some of them in like an hour or two. And that just makes it very digestible, very easy to just jump in and just be like I'm just going to play this. Um, you know, I wouldn't say it's like it's like oh absolutely incredible but i'd say it's really cool and really good i would put it um since i'm the only really the only one that really has anything to uh to say here i would put it i'd put it below new pokemon snap i agree i that's where i was gonna put it thank you thank you <laughs> glad glad we're so like-minded here go vacation now I did play I did play this. However, I don't I never really play go vacation. Oh really? Well, I'm glad I have this on you. Mm. Uh I don't really have strong opinions though. If you played uh a uh, Wii Sports Resort, very samey feeling. It's fun. Uh it's fun to play with people, but it's very forgettable at the same time. It's one of them like, you know, like you have Mario Party and you have some of your favorite mini games, but how often can you play those mini games over and over and over? It's not as fleshed out as a te full Mario tennis game. So, um, I actually like where you're hovering. I, I would rather play that than Kirby, but I think tennis as a sports game is more fleshed out than any of the individual Go Vacation games. Tokyo Mirage Sessions, sessions Sharp FE Encore. It's pretty, it's pretty okay. I really like the story. Uh, it's kind of boring to play out. It's not my favorite. I don't think the two franchises came together in a, in the best way. Um, I know it has a diehard fan base, though. Every time I talk negatively about it, I get a bit of backlash. Um, it's fine. It's serviceable. It's not the best JRPG. Sure, somewhere around where you're hovering right now sounds about right to me. You got to put it above Tennis Aces. You gotta. You gotta you put gotta. it above tennis aces. Um, so yeah, I'd I don't say, know. It's I'd tough. Say, um, Have you played I'd it? Say how about below Hyrule? I played it a little bit. I haven't played the Switch version. Uh, I like the Wii U version because you get text messages on your gamepad. Well, that's I fun. thought that was a fun use of it. <laughs> um, I'd put it below Hyrule Warriors. How about that? That okay. sounds. That's fine. That sounds. That sounds. That sounds fair. Super Mario Maker Two. Look, my Where buddy. That one my buddy Bob will kill me if he ever watches this and we don't put it very close to the top. That is his number one. Uh, I'd probably put it below... Um, uh, I'd put it below Tetris 99. Wow. I got problems with this game. I think the Wii U version was better. He has, he, he has been known to say that too, so... Uh, the Wii U version is better. This one's annoying to play to make levels on. Um, and they took out the mystery mushroom costumes, the one where you use amiibo and you can get all those different characters. That was, that, that made the Mario 1 art style so much fun to play. And now, um, those are gone and it's replaced with the Mario 3D World art style, which is separated from the rest of the art styles for some reason. And, um... Uh, yeah, the story mode campaign is kind of cute, but it's pretty much the exact same thing as the Wii U one, except now it has a world map that, like, uh, you just walk around a, a very small area, so it doesn't really add anything other than just being labeled as a story mode. Um, I don't know. What, what are you? What are you? What are you thinking? What are you thinking? I don't. I don't care. I don't care what Bob thinks. This is about you and me, and nobody else. That is true. I think it offers more content than Tetris 99, but I agree that it's around that area. Um, I'll put it above. I'm open to putting it above. I did enjoy the, the, the solo stuff. I thought it was kind of fun. And I do like making courses on it and playing people's courses. Um, I don't really have much preference over the first or second one. So I mean, like, yeah, I mean, like, this one definitely has more content and uh, it's more fleshed out, but I do feel like 
it took some weird steps back like overall like it just i don't know i don't know i i think it's still in a very good spot it's still in like the good the good ones you know yeah. um but i do feel like a lot of things about it just didn't really come together for me um and it it was yeah like it just kind of felt like some weird steps back step backs were taken uh mario kart 8 deluxe i feel like this probably goes above it with the big boys especially with the uh the new dlc courses in terms of just being like uh overall like the ultimate mario kart but i i don't know i mean being a poor where do you think it lies uh it's mario kart 8 is the best selling switch game of all time one of the best-selling games of all time they added a ton of content into it it is a port so i wouldn't put it above ultimate i think ultimate really is the ultimate of what it is um but i agree right there i mean it's it's classic i mean it really is classic i mean you can pick that up and play anytime with anyone anywhere um which isn't something you can really say about most of these games and it's just fun it's just like it's the best mario kart that's ever been made yeah, I'd say it goes below Smash Brothers Ultimate just based on being a port and the fact that initially they didn't add any new courses. And the new courses that they are adding, you know, most are remasters and some are making their debut here, but like they are a dip down in quality. So it, it is something that's kind of like, okay, probably worse than, than Smash Brothers, but still like in the top three. But we might as well get all the, the heavy hitters out of the way. Where does Breath of the Wild lie? I feel like that's number one. <laughs> I don't really want to even have a conversation about it. Yeah, that's okay. But where does Mario Odyssey go next to it? I feel like it goes, like, right next to it. Maybe below Smash Ultimate. I don't know. Because, like, I feel like Mario Odyssey is uh, is really damn good. But, like, I just don't really have an urge to replay it. And that might just be because I'm kind of yeah, waiting for that's a good point. another game. But, like, I'm always kind of, like, I look back on it super fondly. Like, I yeah, look at I it, do I'm like, too. Oh, that sounds so fun right now. Like, I'm like, oh man, this sounds really damn fun right now. I always see those two games as one and two on the Switch. Like, just the one and two. You are right, though. If I was to pick one up out of Smash and Mario right now, I would probably pick up Smash. But to be honest, I would also probably pick up Smash before Zelda. Just because, like, I'm not currently in a Zelda playthrough. So that would be me committing to playing Zelda again as opposed to like, I can knock out a couple of games online as Sora. Um, so it depends how you want to quantify that, but if we're gonna go with like game quality, oh God, I would probably still put Smash second. Hmm. I think, I think, yeah, I, I, well, I've i always, I've always seen a Zelda and Mario as like one and two on Switch. Okay. Like literally like, you know, like all one and then two. Um, you know, I will say like Smash Brothers is like the most replayable, but it's also like, you know, it's, it's still like, you know, you have that compared to, like, two of the best, like, single-player game experiences yeah. of the of past, time. Like, decade. Yeah. You know, so it's just, like, I, I, I think one and two makes the most sense. But where does Animal Crossing New Horizons lie? Because, like, I feel like this also belongs in the big boys. No, it People does. People have their complaints about this game. People have their complaints because it's just, like, you know, like, oh, lacking in content and and the content trip viewed updates, but just the amount I played I this, I, feel I can't like it has really complain, so you know? much content. Like, I, I, maybe once you're at like, least like five, at launch, at launch, you know? When you're like five, 600 hours in, sure, maybe you, you start running really, out yeah. of things to do, but I mean, think about how much you've played. Um, That's kind of the problem with like all Animal Crossing games. Like everybody's like, yeah, I'm, I'm done, I'm, I'm done with this. It's just like they play 300 hours. Honestly, Nintendo needs to support the game more, like, like The Sims gets support, you know, with like all these expansions and stuff. I don't know why they don't, it's money on the table. Um, I, I would put it above Mario Kart because it's not a port, but I can't put it any higher. It's weird. A lot of people will either have this number one and think you're insane for not, or like not even put it on their list of their top 10. Uh, but I'm, I mean, I'm up there. I think it's... Or it belongs at the at the bottom. <laughs> it's, it's, it belongs at the bottom because like, oh man, they didn't add bla... They didn't... Not blathers. <laughs> there's always... There's always... Every Animal Crossing fan has their one thing that they never added. The the roost. They didn't add the roost later until later, so it's <laughs> Literally unplayable. No coffee. Uh, I, I got so much time out of it, and I and I love my time with it so much that I can't really put it anywhere but, like, the very high up. Um, the problem is, you know, it's like... I just see, like, so much stuff that was in previous games that took forever to come in. And most of the things that they added were from older yeah. games. So it just kind of felt like, uh, why? That is true. No. So that was just always kind of confusing. And the fact that they kind of like ended support. After yeah, like a year, I know. You know. Something like you said, so like they should, they should just keep it up. But I don't know. 
Uh, Mario Strikers Battle League. I want to get this one out of the way. Um, I think this belongs... Um, I think this belongs either above Pokemon Brilliant Diamond or below Pokemon Brilliant I Diamond. I am loving this. You know, just loving this back and forth. I really am. <laughs> I got drugged through the mud the, the day that game came out and I uninstalled it from my Switch and shared that clip to Twitter because it's that bad. I got drugged through the mud because people thought I was being facetious. Cut to all this time later and everyone is on board with it being one of the worst Switch games. It is so pathetic. Yeah, so <laughs> pathetic. Just, it is just very pathetic. I think, I think the gameplay is fun, but that can only get you so far when you only have like eight characters and all the stadiums look the exact same and there's nothing to do other than just play online all the time and the animations are wonderful but you only have eight characters and they all just play the same animations over and over and over again um there's just nothing to the game other than the fun gameplay that's all it has is just kind of fun gameplay and even then like it's kind of like well what why else are you playing the game it's just something that's like well you know it's just like you know you need more you need you need kind of a you need you need something holding that fun gameplay together you know, you can't just have like, oh, it's just fun, but like there's, n you know, like there's there's nothing kind of like harnessing that fun. There's nothing that takes advantage of that fun. You just have to sit down and be like, I want to play more you strikers. And that's all you really think when you sit down and play it. You play for five minutes and then you might as well not play it anymore because you're just going to experience that same five minutes over and over and over again. Yeah, and it didn't evolve or change or flesh out the gameplay over the previous games. It was just a reskin. And yeah, this, is no this sucks. Yeah, I would say it goes below, like below Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. I think the gameplay is is the core gameplay is good, but and the animations are good, but that's it. There's nothing else to it. There's no modes. There's nothing to do with that fun gameplay. Um, that's just kind of my problem with it. And like, you know, I don't know. There's just there's just so there's little nothing there. There's Mario, nothing there. Mario Golf Super Rush has a similar problem, but I just feel like there's more to do in that game. At least even with the core gameplay of like, oh, it's golf. I just feel like it just feels like a more of a different game each time you play it. At least compared to Strikers. No, I agree. I agree with what you said. I don't know where to put it after that, but it's definitely above Strikers. I'd put it below Paper Mario. Um. I'd put it. <laughs> I'd put it above Super Mario Party. I'd put it it's above funny Super how much lower it is than tennis, but I do want to stress that tennis actually had a pretty fun solo player experience, whereas Mario Golf's just was so bad, so weird and boring. Mario Golf's was just like a tutorial in disguise as a story yeah. mode. Yeah, that's what it was. Uh, arms. Where does arms go? What do you think of arms? It's, it's, this is a tough one. I don't think it's necessarily a bad game either. Kind of like Strikers, you know, but it's just not fun to continually play. It's very repetitive and it kind of just feels the same. You know, just doing the same thing. It's a lot of work. Yeah, I put it below. I put it below Mario Tennis Aces. I think it's okay, but like it also, it, it did as well as it did because it came out around the launch of the Switch. And everybody was like, they were all open to trying something or just playing yeah. the next big Nintendo release. And I think visually it looks great. I think the gameplay in like a small vacuum, if it was like a mini game in something, I would be like, this is really fun. Yes. But they don't do anything with it like after that. It's, well, I mean, like they, they did, like they updated it and whatnot. And there's more to the gameplay, but it just kind of feels like. I don't know. It, it feels like you have to go into the game wanting to get really good at it rather than playing it and being like, this is super fun. I want to just play this nonstop. It feels yeah. like you have to go into the game being like, oh, I want to train for hours and hours and, and just and just be really good and just, you know, like just play nothing but this game and just get really good and just learn the intricacies. It just feels like you have to go into it with the mindset of like, I want to learn a fighting game rather than you play it and you're like, this is really fun and I can't wait to just play more of it. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm rambling and I'm going on a tangent about why I didn't really get into this. No, game, I agree. Yeah, and you're actually articulating why I didn't like the game. I honestly just found it boring, but you're right. I wasn't willing to commit to trying to get good at it. Yeah, it, it feels like you had to go into the game committing to be good at it rather than playing it and feeling that. that yeah, because what else is there to, to do in that game other than just trying to be good? Like, there's not much else going on. <laughs> One, two, switch. Where's it going? Where? Or, or uh, how I like to call it, I like to call it 12 switch. 
because uh you know that's what the box art says i'm uh, baffled by the fact that this game has retained its 60 dollar price tag or 50 it's it's full price price it tag was 50 this it was whole 50 time dollars they uh, gave you a deal i don't like it it's the only game that I got any humor out of was the one where you got the sub. Because I would, I would around that time, when the Switch came out, I would make Kim and her granddad and some other people in her house try that game because it's just so ridiculous and funny to make people do it for your, for your humor and yes. your comedic value. But other than that, the game is just trash. I mean, I don't know what else you want to say about it. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's trash. I just think it's a one-trick pony that is immediately... Like, you play okay, it maybe once, trash you play it once and have... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> After that, it's trash. But I think that first, that like, and that first like time you play it, when you get your Switch and you're just like, hey, check this out, and you play it with friends once, it's just like, oh, this is kind of this is kind of quirky and fun. But then it's all like the game has no content. It has no content. It may have like thirty something mini games or something, but those mini games have no depth. It's yeah, literally let just kind of like. It's not trash. It's trash for 50 bucks, though. Like, it, it's something that's really cool and should have been integrated in with the Switch, given for free, like Wii Sports. Because like things like all the balls in the Joy-Con, you remember that one where you could kind of move yeah. the Joy-Con around? And you could actually feel several different balls, clip that, moving around in the palm of your hand it was really unique and it's really cool and it'd be a really great way of like you buy a switch and you're like wow look at all the stuff it can do i want to buy more games to see things like this implemented which definitely happen after this and don't get ignored like the ir reader uh but for 50 dollars, definitely not anything at all La worst worst game and even then as a tech demo like it's just like the only real tech demo part was the, the ball rolling one and i'm just like why couldn't we have more stuff like that I feel like I would have I would have played that game a lot more if it was just kind of like weird little tech demos. The sub sandwich one used the IR reader. That was like a tech demo thing too, but it's just like Yeah. Apart from Labo, nothing has ever used the IR reader. I don't know why it's there. I think Resident Evil Revelations did. Oh my <laughs> it's god, like a thank god. Option. That's actually yeah, pretty cool. I kind of want to like, try that. <laughs> yeah, I think it was that or like Revelations 2. So it's just like, oh, finally, <laughs> something. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, uh, let's 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 cram through a lot of the weird uh, smaller games. Uh, Sushi Striker: The Way of Sushido. What do you think of Sushi Striker? It's it's cute. Don't be but shy. Was, it, it's cute, but was never worth the price tag and doesn't retain a lot of fun. It's probably above Damon X Machina for games I would want to play right now. But that's about it. I would put it... See, like, I, I always liked this... I, I felt like I liked this game a lot more than other people did. Like, I found the gameplay to be really satisfying and addictive. Okay. But the problem is, like... like, But even then, like, I, I didn't really get much... I, like, I, I got, like, a couple hours out of it. But, like, I feel like I downloaded the demo when that game initially came out in, like, June of 2018. And I played that and I was like, damn, this is really fun. I should get this game. And the the... The game was pretty much the exact same thing as the demo. It just felt like it was the same thing over and over and over again. Like playing through the story mode, they don't even really change up who you fight against. It's pretty much always the same like generic soldier or guard or something. So it's just like it it just it's the same thing over and over and I feel you get the exact same thing just playing the demo over and over again. I think it's fun. I think it's cute and I think they put a lot of effort into it, strangely enough. Like, it has, like, fully animated cutscenes and voiceovers and, like, the songs and all of that. It's crazy how much, like, stuff was put into this game. But it feels more like a game that should have been on mobile, you know? I'll put it above Mario Strikers, below Pokemon. Just, just for, okay. I don't know. I, I still, but I still, I still have, I still have a little, little, little like for it. You know the Nintendo New York store? only has two 3ds games for sale that and fire emblem warriors <laughs> well they have loads of both and for some reason it's the only two that they sell <laughs> they want to keep people happy it's not that they couldn't <laughs> sell them they just want to keep them well stocked <laughs> true uh, jump rope challenge jump rope challenge I don't think what that do can think? even really count as a game I mean I'll put it I'll put it around no I don't Kirby. think you need to <laughs> it's I mean I don't really get the point of it I mean it is what it is. It's just you just stand there with the Joy-Cons and you jump and it counts. And it's free. And it, it is, is free. free. I'll put it... I'll put it... Uh, I got more out of this than I did fitness boxing. How about that? I'll put it... <laughs> I'll put it... Uh, I'll put it below... Uh, for what it is, it's free. And it was just a little like, hey, you know, why not? 
I, so I think bought, uh, I bought an actual Nintendo Switch accessory for that game. It was a rope, and you can put the Joy-Cons into it. Hey. But ironically, I think Nintendo, when they made the game, they assumed that people wouldn't really be skipping correctly because you don't have a rope, so you kind of like... You kind of don't really do it right. You just kind of do it, and Nintendo accounts for that. When you try doing it with an actual rope, it doesn't work at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I think it's going below Labo then. It has to. <laughs> uh, just for that. Uh, let's see, Nintendo Switch Sports. Uh, I got a lot of fun out of that for about a week or two. The online really, really, really frustrates me. Things like... Uh, you can't play online with your friends like you can like if you and I right now wanted to play online We totally could but we couldn't go online together and find other people to play against So we would be forced to play with bots stuff like that really does my head in with Nintendo games and takes a lot of fun out of the experience um, So I would say around arms honestly, I have more fun with it than arms, but it, around there I definitely but I think I think ARMS has more depth to it, and I think this game is, like, such, like, it, like you know, it's pretty much just a bunch of repeated games that were already available in, like, Wii Sports and Wii Sports Resort, mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, it felt like, you know, it's just like, wow, there's been s this many years, and, like, you haven't done anything more, like, you, like the games, the, the sports you came up with to include were, like, volleyball and badminton, I'm like, I think I, I had my fun with it, it was better than I, I expected, because, you know, like, uh, I just I, I was expecting like the controls to not be as as good feeling as like the Wii Remote ones just because like I don't I don't trust the the Joy-Con motion controls sometimes but um I think it I think it controls well I think it, it looks okay um you know like the new avatars or whatever but you can use your Mii's whatever um it's just a little lacking in content and I think it's over reliant on online multiplayer for a game series that initially never had online multiplayer um so you know that just felt a little weird um but i think it's overall okay and i would put it above go vacation new super mario brothers u deluxe not a fan yeah that one it's not even not even a good port and so like, no it's, it's not and i'm just i'm so burnt out on that style of mario game i have been for a long time yeah i think uh i think overall i put it i put it maybe I put it above Big Brain Academy. Certain parts of this list have like barometers, right? Like Big Brain is sort of the barometer for the <laughs> lower end. Bayonetta is the barometer for the for the mid tiers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's uh, like New Super Mario Brothers. You like you'll get like it has its place on the Switch. I think it's you know it's like hey you know like they put this out instead of putting a ton of development time into a new 2D Mario game. So at least you got to be like hey you know at least it's a port um, instead. Uh, even if they did like a big compilation of all the new super games, like I think that would have been like, okay, well, it's just four games that are pretty damn similar. So it's just like, okay, mm -hmm. um, you know, like I think it's fine, whatever. Um, I'm just burnt out on that game in particular. I don't really care for that game out of the new Super Mario Brothers series. Um, you know, out of all the ones I played, and I know they kind of blend in with each other, but like that one, I just felt like the levels were a little too long. They just kind of bored me. Um, and I think like the multiplayer, even like the multiplayer in this game, they, they weird it out. They, you know, one player has to play as like Toadette and also like, uh, they made it so then like, oh, the spin jump or the, uh, the little twirl you can do in the air. Like they map that to the, uh, the jump button. So it controls weird. And the only way you can turn it off is with a cheat code. And I'm just like, I don't know. <laughs> it's just, not only is the game not the most exciting and kind of boring, um, it just has some elements that make it kind of worse than the Wii U game. And they even took out, like, the Wii U gamepad modes because, you know, it doesn't really work in this game. But still, like, so calling it Deluxe doesn't even really work for me. Uh, even though it includes New Super Luigi U, but there were Wii U versions of the game that included both. So it's just like, I don't, I don't know. I think it belongs where it belongs, if you have anything to say about that. No, I think you broke that down very eloquently. Mario 3D World, this one's pretty good. Yeah. I'd say it goes up there. I'd say it... For the Bowser's Fury alone. Yeah, I would say it's above or below Fire Emblem Three Houses. That's how high, I think, I mean, like, I think it's the best, like, they, they actually went above and beyond to make sure 3D World is, like, a real, like, they, they fixed everything. Like, they made sure it's just, like, damn, like, this is literally, like, the best way to play this game. And then on top of that, they didn't have to add the Bowser's Fury thing, but they did. <laughs> so it's just, like, it's, you get, like, I don't know. 
What do you think this one was? Uh, the Bowser's Fury experience is all I played when I bought that cartridge, and I absolutely loved it. Uh, I think it's definitely mm -hmm. up there with Mario Odyssey for one for one, my favorite Mario experiences. It's just so Ooh. short and bite-sized. It's tough for me to then look at like Kirby, which is a full game, and be like, that bite-sized adventure is better than Kirby, but for what it offered, it kind of was. You get 3D World with no, it. No, no, you do. You do. If you put that into the equation. Yeah, personal preference and what I had fun playing, Fire Emblem was more fun for me. But I can't deny the package and the experience that is that game. So you can probably just stop bouncing and put it where you know you want to put it. I'll put it, I'll put it below. I'll, no, you I'll can. Follow, you can. I'm total, I'm, I was totally fine to lean into oh, this that. Is, this is you and I. This is a team effort. <laughs> so you know what? One, one, that was my personal bias. Below. It's not necessarily what I where I would put it on the list. <laughs> all right, all right. It's going there. <laughs> all right, so uh, next up is Pokemon uh, Mystery Dungeon Rescue Team DX. That's going straight at the bottom. Uh, what do you think about that one? I, sometimes I can't tell if you're memeing because I'm just agreeing along with the meme. Uh, that game wasn't super fun. It's, it's, not, it's no, not actually... It's, it's not actually 1-2 Switch level. I think it's above 1-2 no. Switch. Really? Wow. Uh, okay. So you're not memeing. All right. I I don't care. I don't, I don't like it either. Good. I don't think it's good I either. I don't good. like it. All right. Fine. It's more of maybe it's, I put it below Damon X Machina. How about that? I think that's better. I don't. I think it's actually a game. <laughs> uh, All but right. How about Flip Wars? Good. What do you think about Flip Wars? Oh God, that counts. I yeah, I barely that was published by Nintendo. I barely remember it. That was one of the f very first eShop games I I had a look at. Um, barely remember. I think remember below it. Sushi Striker. I think yeah, below Sushi Striker. Yeah, very forgettable. I think it's boring and very forgettable, and there's not much to it. But um, but uh, I think it's like probably like ten bucks, so it's just like whatever. But like, I feel like Sushi Striker has more going for it. So I'll I agree. Do that. I definitely agree. Uh, next up, we got uh, let's see, let's see, um, a uh, Box Boy plus Box Girl. What do you think that uh, one goes? I don't even know what that is. Uh, <laughs> I think uh, I'll put it. I'll, I'll put it. Uh, I'll put it right below. I'll, I'll put it above Kirby Star Allies. Bizarre to me, not knowing it's what a it very, is. It's a very simple little puzzle platformer. That's uh, that was originally. Uh, those games were originally uh, released on the 3DS, and this is a Nintendo Switch sequel. Okay. Um, and it's pretty much the exact same style of game. It's very basic, but it's a. Uh, it, you know, it's okay. It's okay <laughs> for what it is. Uh, the Fire Emblem, uh, the first Fire Emblem game that released in uh, 2020. Uh, Fire Emblem oh. Shadow Dragon in the, in the blue. Yeah, blue I didn't blue. play that. I didn't play that. I didn't play that. Sorry. All right. Well, uh, I'll put that uh, pretty much where I think it could go. I think uh, overall as the first Fire Emblem, it's probably just okay. Um, it, it's cool that it released. I'll put it above Box Boy and Box Girl. How about <laughs> Love that? that. All right. Love that. Uh, following that up with uh, Pokemon Cafe Mix, uh, I'll put that above um, Damon X Machina. It's the most basic and boring puzzle game I've ever played. I'm fine with it being there. The, the art is cute, so I'll put it uh, I'll The put art it is really Striker. cute. Oh, yeah, it's fair. I'll put it above Sushi. But it didn't oh, have Sushi really Striker. cool animated yeah. cutscenes, though, like Sushi Striker. But um, the uh, the the gameplay is so just... I don't know where the strategy is. I just see it as like you just... That's why I'm saying around. Sushi Strike is probably better. Boom. There it goes. All right. Snipper Clips. I think Snipper Clips is good. I think it's really good. And I don't think enough people talk about it. Um, because it was right at the launch of the Switch. It came out with the Switch, and it was pretty damn good to boot. I think overall, I think it might be better than Live Alive. Maybe okay. worse. I don't know. Okay, that's going to get some people talking. Um, I have no snipper, strong opinions. What do you have against Snipper Clips? I have no strong opinions. It's fun. It's cutesy. It's, it's not something I ever think about, ever. When someone mentions it, I'm like, oh, that was a thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I definitely had fun playing it. Um, how about this? I'll put it below Bayonetta. I'll put it. I'll put it below Captain Toad. How about okay, that? I think that's probably a bit more that fair. That seems right. Well, <laughs> that seems right. All right, Pokemon Unite. Um, you know, I I do like this game. I was playing it the other night. Um, 
I I'm a well, big you fan. You gotta say what you want to say because I'm gonna put it near the okay. very bottom. <laughs> I'm a big fan of mobas. This is a very uh light moba, but it's they did a good job. It's cutesy. It's fun. It's got a lot of replay value. I would personally put it above tennis for sure. Above whatever that other game is above tennis. Um, Fire Emblem. It's a it's above Pokemon as far as like Pokemon spinoff games for me. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> I I know I don't know about this one. Where would you put? I mean, I'll you put, put it below. Put it I'll put it. I'll put it below Pokemon just to appease you. How about that? No, no, no. Put it. Put it. Put it below. Put it below Arms. Just below Arms. Is better than Switch Sports? It was much higher than Switch Sports a second ago. <laughs> How about right below Switch Sports? Oh, that's fine. I can be on I, that. I enjoy playing that game, and I enjoy playing it more than about the next 10 things that come after it, but I will concede it's not the best game ever. Mm, 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 mm. Okay. Um, well, let's see. Uh, WarioWare, get it together. I didn't like it. It was. I finished it in like 30 minutes. Yeah, I really like the WarioWare games, but I feel like this one, um, all the mini micro games just kind of blend in a little bit more than, than I would like. You know, it kind of felt like... And, and like, I, I think there was a lot of depth there. Um, you know, it's something where each micro game, it depends on who you're playing as for, for this stuff to, you know, like, uh, you know, like to, for how you complete it and, and you can change how you complete it based on who you play as like, that's really cool. But, um, I don't know. I just felt like I got through it in two hours. And after that, I just didn't really feel much desire to play it after that. Yeah. Um, so I would say, uh, I would say above Mario Tennis. Or below go vacation <laughs> i go? thought it, i think it has no replay value whatsoever i mean it's around kirby star allies for me i'll put it above the fire emblem shadow i'll put it above go vacation how about that okay that sounds good buddy thank you thank you marvel <laughs> ultimate alliance 3 where does that one go these are so tough man it's not super fun i i like the first two a lot this is more of the same very repetitive they're not bad games by any means. They're just those like six out of ten games that you don't really know where to place. Um, you're around the middle of the pack. I put it around the, the where we put WarioWare and uh, Go Vacation and all that. I feel like it's probably it has more content going. I, I feel like I feel like I'll put it above Fire Emblem Warriors. It's got a lot of like a ton of content. It's just not super engaging. But yeah, I agree. Yeah, I'd, I'd put it I put it right there. Uh, let's see, um, Pokemon Quest. That that lasted an evening for me. I didn't think it was necessarily bad, but very, very forgettable. Uh, probably just above Super Mario Party. Boom. I'm cool with that. I'm, <laughs> I'm very cool with that. All right. Um, Famicom Detective Club. I put, I put both of them in I did one. Not. I didn't play it. All right, I played it for a little bit. Uh, it is okay. It is a. Uh, it they are visual novels, and as visual novels, they are good. Uh, <laughs> so I don't really have much else to uh, really add. I'd probably put them. I would probably put them. Maybe. Um, that is going way higher below, than I expected. I would put them right above Mario Tennis Aces. Okay, I can't argue because I haven't played it. Never mind. I will put it. <laughs> We'll put it uh, above Pokemon Unite. That's okay. my personal opinion. That's okay. my personal opinion. I'll, I trust I'll put you. It there. Um, uh, Mario Thirty Five. I sucked I at that. I was, that was quite fun. It was so fun. I was so incredibly bad at that game. But uh, yeah, it's like Tetris Ninety Nine. It's similar. It's fun. Yeah, I got I got first place a couple times. Um, I do feel like. It, it was kind of unfortunate because, like, every time I played, um, it just kind of felt like it would just play through the same amount of levels every single time. And I know I had to play more and more and more to unlock them, but it just kind of got really repetitive after a little bit. I felt like it would have been a lot more fun if they mixed it up a lot more, but instead it kind of felt like you just re kept on repeating World 1-1 and 1-2 over and over yeah, and over again. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think the concept was fantastic. I would have loved to see this game not be just a little anniversary celebration kind of deal and actually kind of like be like Mario Maker. We're like, oh, you have different skins. You can have a Mario 3 skin. You can have a Mario World skin, all that stuff. I think that would have been yeah, incredible. Yeah, and add extra courses and stuff too. Yeah, and it was a free game. So it's just like, I don't know. I would say, I would say, I would put it above Mario Kart Live. Okay. 
I'm just fine. because like it didn't it didn't achieve its full you know <laughs> potential it, it didn't yeah it didn't achieve its full potential you know it was just kind of there and it was really fun for the time but you know it, it, like i don't know i think tetris 99 is still better um but i think you know it still had a lot of worth and uh for free i don't you know i can't complain that much uh let's see uh dragon quest builders i love that game that's got a very special spot in my heart well, you can rank it right alongside Dragon Quest those, Builders, too. Those, where, those two games, though, were multi-platform. Were they public, co-published or something? Uh, no, Nintendo published the Switch versions in North America. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. Um, well, I will say that the Switch ports are fantastic, but the point of the game is to build a lot of stuff. And when you build too much stuff, the game gets really laggy and the frame rates dip to unplayable amounts really end game, which sour the experience. But the full like 60 hour campaigns are so much fun. Uh, the second game added so much as well as like four player co-op. Uh, I'm a huge fan. I'm looking at the list. They're definitely above Pokemon Tournament. I would probably put them personally in between mario 35 and skyward sword oof all right all right i'm down all right which goes first two or one the set the second one was way better you could probably Bam. even drop the first one down below 35 if you want to make it look like we thought about Damn. it yeah you're just like <laughs> man i really like dragon quest builders 2 i liked it more than mario 35 and dragon quest builders 1 i didn't like as much as mario 35 if that can uh tell you what i think about it it's it's hard it's hard Scott because I'm trying to do this list with you and I know you really like 35. I also really like I when I, from what I played at Dragon Quest Builders I really liked it. Then put it above 35. I just don't have as if much. You, I don't if, really have as much. I didn't play Builders too, so I don't really have as much of a. Uh, I don't really Builders have as much of a uh, way thought better. process on that. World ends with you. Final remix. This is going a little down. I think. I think this goes a little. Well, in the uh, well, in the iffy category because of the controls. The controls gave me arthritis. That was definitely tough to play. Fantastic game, though. Yeah, I think I would put it. I think I'll put it like above Big Brain Academy, just because the controls kind of make the experience quite bad. <laughs> the controls are rough. Yeah, but it's a good game. That's the tricky thing. Oof. You it's know what? It's a fantastic what? game. We'll put it above uh, Famicom Detective Club. Okay. Right there. It's a good game. Without the bad, without the bad controls, I think we'd be, we'd be, we'd be sitting pretty. Metopia. You know what? I liked it on 3DS. I was excited to get it on Switch, and I started playing, and I realized it's really not that great. It's, um, it's, it's fine. It's fun. It's serviceable. But as you said, unless you're willing to really spend time and, and make all the me's characters in your life or funny memes or things that you can get attached to it's super basic it's just a pick up and play run through a couple levels and be done um it's not bad it's definitely mid tier i put it around switch sports uh, i put it below switch sports just because like like you said like if if you are not willing to put like more into it and just have fun with it and just be like goofy about it it's not going to be enjoyable. It's very basic. There's not Also, it's as, fun getting goofy it. with it, but it's weird doing it on your own. Like, it kind of sucks that you yeah. do this fun, goofy stuff, but then no one else gets to see your memes. It's just memes for you, mm -hmm. and that's not as fun. Yeah, and, like, um, compared to, like, Tomodachi Life, which Miitopi is kind of like a spiritual successor to, um, Tomodachi Life on the 3DS had very similar, like, oh, man, uh, I'm going to make my friends all memes, and they're going to say silly things, but, like, they had a text-to-speech thing in tomodachi life so it was like this really weird creepy like version of your friends talking and that was what made it funny and weird but Metopia only has text boxes and i don't think that's nearly as funny no. so i think like i'll put it around here just because like you know it, it wasn't for me in the in the state i wanted to play the game in um but it was uh you know like i i understand why people really enjoy this game so i think around kind of the nintendo switch sports area um the stretchers i i never played this game i had, i've never i don't know it. anybody that did i don't know anybody that did and because of that i'll put it above jump rope challenge <laughs> uh, let's sense. see uh ring fit adventure i like that i uh it actually for someone who's into fitness i was able to really appreciate uh, the way they integrated a lot of 
fitness ideals, but the way you move your body and the way you use the ring. It's crazy that just the ring can give you a full workout when you start putting in your own body and your legs and all of that. Um, and also, the game is kind of fun for like an RPG that you play with your body. They put a lot of work and thought into it. Um, and you could legitimately get in the shape with this fitness game. And not a lot of fitness games can say that. I do agree. I think I think this game is a really well thought out kind of successor to the Wii Fit series um, where it, it's an actual game. And I think I think it kind of pleases both camps where it's just like it's more of a game than Wii Fit, but it's still like very understandable like Wii Fit. And mm -hmm. uh, I think it's just this really good middle ground. Um, I think putting it, um, I think uh, putting it above Captain Toad, but below Bayonetta. Yeah. Okay. I agree. Speaking of that, where does Bayonetta 2 go? Yeah, I still think it's right next to Bayonetta. They're very interchangeable games. You can like play one right into the next one and it feels like the same game. I don't know if that's just me, but uh, I think they're great. That is fair. That is fair. Bayonetta 2 is just kind of like a continuation of Bayonetta 1, but better. Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah, I feel like I feel like we could probably put it above like Pokemon Sword. Okay, I'm fine with that. Well, I think I think that works. I think that feels better. I get All scared right, to I get scared to put anything above Club Fifty One. I got to be honest. I'll put Clubhouse Games above Pokemon Sword. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> All right, good job. Uh, no, no, that's part time UFO. Well, part time UFO. I like this. Game. I, it's I, cute. I I didn't play that. It is. It's, it, it was a mobile game released by Hal, the Kirby people, and uh, Nintendo published the Switch version. And it's pretty it's pretty nice. It's pretty fun. It's a cute little game. It's better than Box Boy and Box Girl. I'd put it, um, I, I'd put it, uh, I'll put oh, it, I'll getting, put it above Mario getting, Kart Live. That's getting higher and higher. It's pretty good. And you can't say a damn thing about it because you never played it. So <laughs> I'll just, uh, True. I'll just, I'll just go ahead. Uh, let's see. Good job. I have played that. It's fun. It's it's definitely a unique idea. Um, not super high though. Not super high. Maybe like below Mario Kart Live or like above Mario Tennis Aces. Yeah, I'm fine with the anything in that area. I'd rather play it than most of those. All right, all right. We'll put it. We'll put it. We'll put it below Mario Kart Live. How about that? All right. I'm easy. Now we have uh, Hyrule Warriors: Age of Calamity. Okay, this one's. Which high. I enjoyed this game. This one's high. I enjoyed this game quite a bit. Yeah, I really liked it. I do feel like the story fell apart at the end, in my opinion. Okay. As in, as in like uh, the big, you know, as in like when they start incorporating time travel stuff, mm, like that just kind of takes and just kind of like tears apart the entire like reason why I really wanted to play the game, you know? Um, it's interesting. It just kind of goes like, you know, I mean like it didn't ruin it, but it made the game less, less enjoyable to me, even though I still enjoyed it quite a bit. I like time travel stories, and I think that from the start, something had to happen like that for a lot of things to make sense. Um, but in general, the story was fantastic, whether it fell apart at the end or not. I think it was really cool what they did. Uh, and I thought the gameplay for a Warriors game was the best they've done so far. I thought it was super fun. I think uh, below Bayonetta and Bayonetta 2, because like you know those, those have much better gameplay uh, in right. terms of you know hack and slash. But... Um... You know, maybe around the Ring Fit area, probably like less than Ring Fit, but better than like Captain Toad. Sure. I don't think oh, it's a better man. game than Ring Fit, but I think Ring Fit did some really unique things. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think that's kind of my mentality with it. But no, like I really enjoyed the game. I thought like it was it was great. I, I just felt like going into it, I wasn't really expecting a time travel story. So that's kind of like why it felt like a little like... Like, just like, oh, <laughs> like, so that's what we're doing near the end. But, I'll say that the wind um, was taking out the sails, realizing that it might not actually be a canon story. But I mm -hmm. think Breath of the Wild 2 is going to answer a lot of those questions on whether or not it ends up being canon. So we'll see. Super Kirby Clash. What do you think about Super Kirby Clash? Was that the pay to win one or the one just that was free to pay play in general? It was, it was free to Microsoft play. Microtransactions. It was free to play. Um... Yeah, I mean, I'll I, put I it didn't. Below yeah. Kirby Star Allies, but above Paper Mario. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Those games to me are very interchangeable. Kirby's Dream Buffet. I don't like Where it. Does this one go? I don't like it. Really? I haven't played it yet. Uh, I uninstalled that day one. Uh, two of my friends and I played it together, and we all uninstalled it day one. Uh, super technical issues online, just really laggy frame rate drops, really basic game, Fall Guys Light. Um. 
honestly, just group it with the other two Kirby's, but probably put it above Star Allies just because it's uh, $15. And um, I would rather play it than Star Allies. Boom. I assume I would kind of like it, but uh, I have not played it yet. So it's going right here as of the moment. Kirby Fighters 2. That's not bad. It's a little fighter game with Kirby's. There's a second one. And I think it's, uh, I don't think it's that bad. I think I'll put it above, uh, uh, uh I'll put it right below Metopia. How about that? Yeah, okay. Yeah, all right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Scott, 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 please the Kirby Fighters 2 fans. All right. Well, next up is Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. Where does that one go? I really like these remakes. I thought the visuals were gorgeous. Um, the gameplay was a bit of a hit or miss with whatever weird things they were trying to do, but I think it's probably the best way to play those games. I mean, I think I'm high with it, not too high, middle of the pack, probably uh, around about that remake port area of the, the 3D Mario games and Skyward Sword, somewhere around there. All right, all right. I probably, I'll probably put it like probably put it below skyward sword uh donkey kong country tropical freeze i like this game i really like it same it's one of my favorites in fact that was probably one of the laziest wii u ports though they should they just added funky but kong. it's pretty good it's it pretty is good, really though. good but it is yeah. a wii u game literally to its core i will put it right below bayonetta 2 i'm okay with that i'm okay with cool. that it's a great game fire emblem Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes. I played like an hour and that's it. It's okay. I will put it below Hyrule Warriors, Age of Calamity. Um, I'm open to like putting it, uh, boy, where's regular Hyrule Warriors? Oof. Um, it's definitely above regular Hyrule Warriors because now we're in the stage of Warriors games where they're integrated in with the stories. You can play that game with the three different houses. I think it's really cool what they've done. And I don't not like it. I just have other things to play right now. So I'll put it. Yeah, I'll put it. I'll put it below Hyrule Warriors and I'll put it below Captain Toad, but above Snipper Clips. That feels right to me. That <laughs> as just long as, as right. long as it feels right to you that you said those things out loud. All right. All right. All right. Mario Party Superstars. They fixed all the issues, fixed mm -hmm. all of the issues. Super Mario Party. It is still based on older content, so that might take it down a couple notches, but I think it is uh, easily one of the best uh, multiplayer games on Switch. I would honestly put it below Link's Awakening. Um, I don't, I know, I know, but still, I think it's pretty good. You know, I would I'm probably put it like below Paper Mario. I'm open to, I'm open to discussion here. I was actually thinking of going a little higher than where you had it. Ooh. I was, I was open to the idea Go just cause on. it is really Mario Party finally, Mario Party finally back in action in like a decade. Like it's been so long. It is a little lackluster for me and there, there could be more content, but what's there is exactly what I've wanted. So I would go below Arceus because I would honestly pick that up if you mm. wanted to play it after this and play it. See, here's the thing. I think Mario Maker 2 has more content though. So I'm kind of like maybe Yeah, but at least you don't Mario have to at least you don't have to make the content <laughs> in Mario Party. That is true, but you just yep. got to find the content. All right, yeah. all right. All right. I'm down. <laughs> I'm down. I'm down. Uh Xenoblade Chronicles 2 Torna. Uh I actually liked that, believe it or not. Um it was a big step up. Uh, it's below Bayonetta. It's below Hyrule Warriors. Sorry, now I'm just looking at the list. Now we're getting into the... There's so much in this list I'm trying to... I don't think I could put it below Pikmin. So Nobody could. I'm in, I'm in that... Nobody, I'm in, could. nobody could. I'm in that region. Here's why... I, I, we haven't got to Dino Blade 2 yet, for obvious reasons, I'm sure. But that game, Torna, did fix almost all the issues I had with two and i really enjoyed the story it, it was off and running from the start of the game and it was pretty solid i liked it quite a bit i think i think it makes sense to kind of put this below captain toad um but above fire emblem warriors just because you know like warriors is still a warriors game this is you know more of a fully fledged or at least you know an expand you know a sequel or it's, yeah like it's a, a pretty big you know, game. standalone standalone dlc pretty much to um xenoblade 2 so i think i think i think where it's at makes sense um, all right. Yoshi's Crafted World. I got things to say. <laughs> I don't really like this game. I don't really like it. Um, I would say it's better than Kirby. 
Yes. Yeah. I always see Saw allies in this Yoshi game right next to each other for these big IPs that just deliver basic, super easy baby versions of these games that we just don't need at this point. They're just, they're hand in hand, but Yoshi was more fun. Well, the problem is like Yoshi's Woolly World on Wii U was so good. It was very, very good. It was mm -hmm. beautiful, fantastic. And this one just felt like a downgrade in most ways. The gameplay is kind of interesting how, um, you know, it is 3D, but still 2D pretty much. Um, they have some cool ideas, but like, it's just, I don't know. It's just so just mediocre i don't know like that's just kind yeah, of my no, thing it i just it's just that's just all it is, like honestly uh xenoblade 3 the third xenoblade really good better than two better than Torna. not better than one so it's below definitive but only just uh i would put I it like right here i would put it above arceus i really liked it it's i'm still playing it i'm like 80 hours in and the content's not drying up so i really like that game dragon quest 11 S, I think oh, is wonderful. Fantastic. That's really, 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 really high. Um, that's above Bowser's Fury for me. Uh, Damn. I would say... I would say... How about this? I'd go below Fire Emblem. Um, I would go above. Why would you go below? I don't know. I just feel... Sometimes you just feel like that makes sense. <laughs> that just makes <laughs> sense. I'm not... I don't know why. It I'm just, not going to put up an argument. I'll just say that it kind of feels to me like um, an RPG version of Ocarina of Time, and I just love it so much. How about this? Uh, below 3D World, I think. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine right with that. Me. Yeah. That feels right. Octopath Traveler. Really loved this game when it came out. The story got really repetitive and derailed near the end. The back the back quarter was pretty boring. Um but great game, and it inspired and spurred on Triangle Strategy as well as Live Alive, I'm sure, happened because of this game. So, uh, and I I know what I'm saying there, but the remake happened, I think, because of the success of this game. So yeah, under yeah. Live Alive, I'm, I'm good with that. Somewhere around there, I'm I'd fine say, with that. I'd say below Bayonetta 2 and above Donkey Kong. Do you, do you really like it? Is that why you put it there? Because I might go under the first Bayonetta, unless you have strong opinions here. I'm down. I'm down for that. Okay. I don't care one way or another. Okay, all right. <laughs> I, I couldn't care one way or another. I'm just trying to be unbiased. Astral Chain. I didn't really love I, this I, game. I personally didn't really care for this one, but you know, I loved it. it. I'm a big hack and slash fan. This game brought so much to the hack and slash genre that I haven't seen before. With the with the with the chain blade scenario, using both at once was super unique. I really enjoyed the setting, the cyberpunk esqueness to it. The story I thought was really cool, but mostly I was just there for the gameplay. We don't get enough hack and slashes, and that one was brilliant. I think that's better than Bayonetta One so uh, oh damn yeah no i really liked it i really liked it that makes sense to me um we got bravely default 2 um you know it kind of just felt like a little it, like for the fans it was great i don't think this really appealed to many people other than like pre-existing fans of bravely default you know i that's agree a hundred that's just how i perceive perceive it so like i don't really know where to put it for me personally i played the demo it didn't grab me at all um you know so what are you what are you feeling i had friends that adored it i tried playing it i i'm so sorry i was bored to tears and i didn't really like the visual style that much i'm not saying it's a bad game it's just it, it this game suffers from something that a lot of jrpg fans love it is traditional jrpg to its core it doesn't do any flair and that's what this game is good at but that's what makes it boring uh so i'm pretty low on it but i'll let you put it where you want to put it uh how about below tokyo mirage sessions yes i, I would rather above play Pokemon. tokyo yeah because that has a bit more flair um tokyo has a ton like, of flair if, if you yeah so like i feel like bravely defaults a little more like like you say traditional in the sense of like not a ton of flair but also like you know you're getting a good jrpg experience it just may be a little boring <laughs> uh, at least to like me who i'm it's not my go-to genre and also like i haven't played enough of it to really say but i'll just i need there. big and flashy you know i need to be yeah. distracted while i play well, that's why I mean, like, that's why the HD 2D style works is just it's it's just more interesting to look at than what they had going on in Bravely Default 2, mm -hmm. which is why like I'm just like, eh, you know, it's just like it just didn't really add up for me. That's but why I like strategy though. Oh, but go on. 
I was going to say, that's why I like Xenoblade. Even though the gameplay is kind of boring and slow paced, the story is so good. But triangle strategy, though... I had nowhere else to go with that. I was I was letting you finish your I, sentiment. I, I haven't played. I I, I haven't played. Oh, I, haven't played I started it. This game suffers from just a slog of dialogue. They, they, it's almost a graphic novel, and a lot of people have said it's it's almost part graphic novel, part turn based uh, strategy RPG. And for me, that that did lose me a bit. I didn't enjoy it as much as Octopath, um, but in the hour that I played, uh, so I would be under it. Um, but I can't speak too much for it, having only played that you know couple hours. I'm done. I'm done to put it like right next to a. Uh, I've heard uh, great Octopath. things. Just a lot of reading. <laughs> All right, and then uh, we finally got down to one game left, and uh, yeah, I'll just put that. Uh, I'll just put that right there. Okay, great, and, uh, cool. We're good. Yeah, we're good. 